We will have the roll call. Are everybody here? Madam Secretaries? Okay, we yes. have our quorum. Uh, everybody is here. Uh, I know I'm going to have chair's remarks, but I just have a couple of announcements as we get started. Number one, uh, we love being in our new boardroom, but we haven't got all the kinks worked out. Uh, there may be some, we may go slow, and there may be some things that we have to redo. And I just really ask for your patience today, both from the board and from our audiences, that uh, we're, we're doing our best to adjust to the new system and the new software. Uh, I would like to announce, in case you hadn't noticed, please, if any of you have a drink, it's got to have a lid on it. We don't want to ruin our gorgeous new carpeting. And so please, there are black lids back there. Whenever you have anything to drink, make sure that you put a lid on it. Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, we'll go to the Pledge of Allegiance and Director Blackburn will lead it. Please rise and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> acknowledging the media, is Emily here yet? I'm sure she will be from the Globe. Uh, and of course, we have our um, internal ones upstairs. So they are here. Now we get to the agenda, and this is one of the first things. There are some changes to the agenda, and I'd like to go over that before I ask for approval of the agenda. First and foremost, uh, number seven, the update from VMS will be Mary Stone, not Joe Rainey. In 11, uh, we are adding <clears throat> under 11A, we are moving from... Uh, 12D, Unit 2010D, to the consent calendar. So that will be under A in the consent calendar. We are removing on the consent calendar item D and moving it to 12F under unfinished business. Item <clears throat> I under the consent calendar is going back to committee. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, uh, was decided by the committee and didn't get off the calendar, but we will not be discussing that today. That's going back to the architectural standards and control. So uh, that one is off our agenda. And on unfinished business E, 607A, we will be moving that to 14B. Under the report of the Architectural about, Control so. and Standards Committee. Under committee reports, I don't see the Gary Morrison will be giving A, the Finance Committee report. He is the vice chair of that committee. And I believe that's all the changes that we have to the agenda. Uh, are there any other uh, changes from the board? If not, I'd ask for a motion to approve the agenda. I'm so moved. Maggie and a second. Andre. Okay, now we have our wonderful little screens here that we can vote. I'm called for the vote on approval of the no, agenda. I, I requested to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I missed the first two changes, Winita. Would you repeat the first two? Number seven will be Mary Stone. Okay. And uh, under A, we're moving <clears throat> 2010D <clears throat> from 12D to the consent calendar. 2010D. It's number D under 12, and that's moving to the consent calendar. It got put on okay. unfinished business instead. I'd like to um, add a couple things. Uh, I'd like to move 11A to 13D. Thank you. I'd like to move um, 11A 
to 13B? All of them? Just A. I'm sorry, under A, we have one, two, three, four, five, six items. Oh, I'm sorry. The first one, 126D. 126D? Yes. If we could move that to 13B. And then I have a question. All these items that could be new or <clears throat> two of them would be new, the others would be uh, old business, that are put under the consent calendar that uh, require 30 days notification. Yes. And this is to allow the community ample time to speak to these issues. Correct. Um, I don't feel they properly belong under the consent calendar. I think they should be under new business. We only have one item under new business at a board meeting. <laughs> and to have them under the consent calendar is tempting to just vote it right through with the rest of the things. But this is, as you'll notice on the consent calendar, this is just voting to postpone it to conform to the 30-day notification. Uh, this is not approving anything. Two of them have already uh, met the 30-day notification. Right. One, well. The first two. The first two. Yeah. And we did move the first one, D, to 12F. To 12F. Under unfinished business. That was D. Okay. Uh, the other ones, uh, one is approved and uh, must conform to the 30-day notification, as does F and G. So all we're doing is putting them on the calendar for our next meeting in August, because there's not 30 days between the June meeting and the July meeting, to give uh, the residents a, an opportunity to give us any input on those. You know, we, we, we serve the community, as we all know, and we try to make it easy for our residents to participate and understand what we're doing, understand how we're working for them. Does anybody else? Maybe no one else feels that way. I just feel it should not be under a consent calendar, that it should be under new business. But I don't know if anyone else feels that way. I may be the only one. We will discuss it, and it will be on the regular uh, calendar in August. This is just a notification that we're looking at this. Oh, it will be on the regular calendar. Absolutely. Oh, okay. That's what I, it if says. If you said that, I missed it. Sorry. No. Postpone to August. Yeah. On all of these. And, and in August, it will be on the regular be. calendar. It'll be on August. the regular calendar. Yes. Thank you. This is just a notification that these are issues that we're looking at. All right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Cash, you asked to speak? Yes, uh, on uh, item 12B, page 303, you're saying parking committee. It should be parking task force. Correct. And we changed that on the, that, but it should, um, the, the new one. Uh, you, you got a, an extra piece of agenda. And yes. That, we did change that to okay. task force. It is not a committee. You are correct. Right. It's there. <clears throat> Good. All right, uh, and let's see, Pat. Uh, yes, with regard to what's been put on the consent calendar, I think an item such as the common area land use, to put that on there without seeing exactly who it. Who's voting? I'm sorry, did you hear me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry about that. My thing wasn't turned on. Uh, I think it's not um, appropriate to put something like the land use common area resolution on the consent calendar, because the consent calendar flies through as something very routine. Uh, on the other hand, this common area land use is anything but routine. We and already I, removed it. I now. want to, I know, but I want to make sure that that um, we have a roll call vote on it, and that's why I'm doing that. Thank you. All right. Well, we have already moved D to 12F, yeah. and <clears throat> we will definitely have the voting that will be shown on the screen on that. All right, I have a motion by Maggie, and it was seconded by Andre. Um, any other discussion on approval of the agenda? <coughs> 
Okay, uh, I think we're ready to vote. Can you tell us again? It, 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 it was, the motion was made by Maggie, Director Blackwell, and it was seconded by Director Trong. Trong. Torn. Torn. say it wrong. I apologize, Andre. How about you? <laughs> Now, for all of you at home who are waiting, we have a screen that comes up which allows us to vote. And you will see the results of that vote. And the screen should be up. Ready? Okay, everybody vote, please. Oh. All right, let's cease voting. We still have a couple oh. votes. Sorry, somebody. This is all new, folks. Press the yes. We're trying to get away from waving hands. So did I. <coughs> Do it all. Um, I still have Jack Bassler. Jack, you didn't Director vote. Director Bassler. I, I thought I did, but I didn't see anything happen. I'm on the panel. Would you call me back to vote? Okay. I pushed on that. Yeah. Okay. Do we have everybody voted? Yep. I did that once. All right. Then we will cease voting. And there you go. Now everybody can see who voted and uh, who voted yes mm -hmm. and none voted no and none abstained, but you'll see that I didn't vote. As chair, I will only vote if it's a, a, a tie vote, and so I'm just not included in that, and it's the and 10. Then, uh, All right, so it is approved unanimously. All right, <coughs> approval of the meeting minutes of May 9th, 2017. Do I have any additions or corrections to the minutes of May 9th? Cash. Page 27, again, the word parking committee, uh, item 16. Yes. That it should be parking study, not parking committee. Parking task force. Or task force. Yes. Which yes. page are you referring to? Page, page 27, 27 of 27. 27. Item 5A. Yes. Item 16. Last bullet. Yeah. All right, we will change that to task force. Yeah, you were just asking to be a part of that, and then we did make you chair of it. All right, any other additions or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. It's not really amended, excuse me. I will approve, approve the minutes as corrected. That was just really a Scribner's correction. Do I have a? Janie moved. Maggie, too fast. Do I have a second? Maxine seconded. Maxine. All right. Uh, would you all vote, please? Commence voting. OK. We cease voting. I still have, oh. I still have Maxine and Gary, Director McIntosh and Director. Well, I got Maxine. the little tidal wave. <laughs> it took a third tack. I got a long. And Director Tibbetts, did you vote? Yes. Okay. We'll have to have Chuck come around and look at that for you. Director Tibbetts. All right, we're good to go. Okay, recording the, the result of the votes. Okay, uh, 10 0, 0 and so the uh, approval of the meeting minutes of May 9th, 2017 passes unanimously. For one more day at least. We'll, we'll go around. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I'm holding the chair. Your, your mic. Uh, microphone. <laughs> mic. I really did not resign. Mic. Turn your mic on. There we go. Okay. I really did not resign. I am the chair. <laughs> I gave some of my remarks. Uh, I would like to thank the uh, city 
of Laguna Woods for allowing us to use their council chambers for the last three months. And uh, maybe if they decide to update, we can uh, reciprocate by letting them use our wonderful new facility. It is wonderful. Uh, I mentioned about the tups and the caps. We want to keep this carpet as clean as we can. And that's one of the problems that we have had in the past. Uh, we have screens, and we vote electronically, and we make motions electronically. We're still learning, so please bear with us as we, we go through this. Any questions that you in the audience or uh, at home have, please uh, get in touch with us and let us know what's working or what's not working, but we think that you're going to have much more information than we've been able to give you before. The agendas are all online. The meeting is not only going to be online, live, but will be filmed and you'll be able to see on YouTube and other uh, digital means. So I think that's going to help our, our transparency a lot. Uh, that's about all I have this time, so we will go to the update from our VMS director, and that's Mary Stone today. Mary, if you will. Good morning. Uh, the May 3rd VMS board meeting was canceled so that the VMS directors could attend the departmental staff meeting where 16 employees received recognition of excellence awards demonstrated commitment to their work in Laguna Woods Village during the first quarter of 2017. The Management Information Services Department won the team award. Chuck Holland heads that department, and his team included Amy, Daniel, Derek, Jay, Jason, John, Marcel, Matt, and Patricia. Other recipients were Leslie from the CEO's office, Gate Ambassador Chris, Luis from Landscape, Damaso from Plumbing, and Gilberto from Janitorial Services. On May 17th, VMS Director Marcy Scheinwold conducted the VMS board meeting. Several VMS directors were absent, including Chair Dan Kenny. They went on tour to San Onofre. Meanwhile, back in the Willow Room, we briefly discussed the 409A deferred compensation policy and the project log for GRF United and Third. Section 409A of the Internal Revenue Code applies to compensation that workers earn in one year but is paid in the future. More in-depth discussion of the project log and the department head update was moved to May 31st. On May 31st, Christine Spar, Resident Services Administrator, gave an outstanding report of what is happening in her very busy department. It included personnel updates, status of strategic plan items, accomplishments since her arrival January the 28th, and future goals. I was personally very impressed with Ms. Spar's positive approach and commitment to service in our community. Resident Services now has a whole new look. The VMS board and members discussed the project log and Ernesto Munoz, head of maintenance, clarified issues and answered questions. The log listed 40 GRF projects, 15 United projects, and 29 third projects. 20 of the 84 projects were estimated for completion by May. On a personal note, I had an opportunity to work with Mr. Munoz on the Purchasing and Contracts Task Force, and it was pure pleasure. He was always smiling and very professional. At our June 7th meeting, the VMS board reviewed more medical and dental details with regard to the benefit compensation study. 170 non-union personnel were enrolled in the medical plan, and 167 were enrolled in the dental plan. Medical cost increases are projected to remain around 6%, while the consumer price index for Los Angeles and Orange County area is just over 2%. VMS monthly insurance premium costs were lower than Walnut Creek and slightly higher than Seal Beach. Bruce Hartley gave an update of the General Services Department and its six different operations. 
He reported that purchasing and contracts gets really busy towards the end of the year, setting up contracts for the new year. The warehouse needs to be completely reorganized. Central Services is handling all the reports and agenda packets for the boards and staff and does over $60,000 worth of copying services for residents. That's a lot of copies at Penny's page. Custodial services for both GRF and the mutuals will be implementing more technology to become more efficient and janitorial staff will cover two shifts between 4.30 a.m. and 11 p.m. The 15-man crew of streets and sidewalks paving is working extra hard to catch up on the backlog of tickets and transportation is focusing on ways to boost ridership and become more efficient. Bruce discussed some staffing challenges and training needs along with ways to create a more productive environment. It's really great to have Bruce on the VMS team. We continue to get great feedback from our residents. Our landscape crews are continuing getting kudos. While we know there are some areas that still need some attention, rest assured that these areas are likely already in the works or will soon be attended to. Ms. DeSantis at Cul-de-Sac 52 wrote to tell us what an amazing job the trimming crew does. She said that the area looks so open, clean, and welcoming now. The work of staff created more light, and now she sits on her patio and watches the setting sun. In resident services, VMS employee Carolyn received kudos from Saul, who described her as courteous and friendly and is appreciative of her assisting him with his recent lease permit. Ms. Whitehead at 646B phoned and expressed her appreciation for work by a VMS plumber who came right out and fixed her leaky toilet. We thank you all for your nice comments and we will continue to focus on our goals. The next VMS board meeting is June the 21st. It's always a pleasure to have United Directors attend our meetings and we thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Now, we move to our CEO report. <laughs> Very, finally. Thank you, uh, Honorable President, members of the board, community. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and United residents. Uh, I guess I have to say a little bit about the boardroom. It is uh, a pretty special place, and we're only beginning to utilize some of its capability. Um, this is a full studio. When we surveyed residents several months ago, you told us your favorite program on TV6 was the board meetings. And so we thought we would fix them, this up a little bit so you could enjoy it even more. So we've added HD cameras. You can see the picture is quite a bit better than it used to be. Um, these cameras, there's uh, one, two, three, four, is there five? Four or five in here were installed actually by residents uh, on our HD task force. And they also helped us with the, with the installation at uh, the Performing Arts Center and Clubhouse 5, so it was really a partnership between uh, the, the mutuals, staff, and residents that enabled this project to go through. We've added these LED lights in here, which are very studio-oriented, so we can do a number of things. There's a lot of flexibility here, including uh, uh, the, the lectern there spins all the way around, so you can do a lecture or a training uh, you can uh, uh, do a town hall, uh, of course, our governance meetings, which we do both board meetings and as well um, the committee meetings. So there's, there's a lot of use uh, in this room. But really, those are, those are the obvious things. The things that I think residents are really going to like are the transparency pieces of this. Um, you will be able to watch, as, as Juanita said, uh, meetings from anywhere any time. If you're a snowbird or a sunbird and you want to know what's going on here while you're back in Indiana or in Phoenix, um, all you have to do is pull out your smartphone and you can watch the meetings live or, or you can go to our archive section and watch the meeting the next day or an older meeting if you wish. You can also access archive meetings by agenda item. So maybe you, you want to uh, access a particular item, but you don't really want to listen to a three-hour board meeting. You can go right to that item, see the, the item you're interested in, and then move on to your, the rest of your life. Um, it also allows for e-comment, so members can comment 
from the privacy of their own home. Uh, many of our residents are homebound. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to participate in our governance activities, and so they can do that. Uh, it's our goal. We didn't meet it this week, and I, I apologize to this board and the community to, we had a malfunction, to get the agendas online and available to you five business days before the meeting occurs. Uh, that gives you a chance to really digest and look at the information uh, before the board acts. Transparency after the fact is just not transparent, and that's not our goal. So we want you to, to be well informed, get the information, be able to come here and, and share your thoughts uh, and opinions. Uh, again, there's so many, so many features that, that we're just scratching the surface on. One of them I, I have to talk about, though, is the actual uh, agenda production, which has been a very labor-intensive, manpower-intensive uh, uh, effort. Um, to, to construct all these agendas for these boards and committees. It takes a lot of people many, many, many days to do. And this system has a, an automated agenda manager in it that automates the production of these agendas and materials, automatically posts them online, that sort of thing. So while we haven't fully realized the potential there, and in fact this week, um, they may have cost us some money because we had a, we had a data dump that uh, set us back a bit. Um, but uh, as our skills are honed and your skills are honed, members of the board, I think we'll be much more efficient. And so that's our goal, and, and I think we'll get there very, very shortly. So with that, I wanted to share a couple things we're working on. Many of you have probably seen the uh, pool solar. Uh, I think the installation is already complete at uh, uh, Clubhouse uh, 1 and 5, and I think 6 is sort of on the way. I haven't been by there, so I don't know, but I, it seemed like that was a little bit later. Uh, the ROI on those projects uh, is something in the you know two to three year range. It's very, very fast. Uh, the rebates we got weren't as high as we anticipated, but still very good. So very positive investment for the community. Uh, we can, I always get a lot of requests to, to heat the pools up to a little higher than what we do. And, you know, occasionally we'll nudge it up a bit, you know, just to keep people happy. Well, now we can do that without costing a bunch of money. So uh, keeping pools warm for our residents so they can swim uh, year round, uh, that's, that's a good thing to do. And, and saving money isn't bad either. You know, I get a lot of complaints about showers and locker rooms, you know, uh, kind of grimy shower heads, dirty grout, that sort of thing. And so I, I really challenged Ernesto and his crew to get out there and clean these places up. And so over the last month or so, they replaced all the shower heads in the village to low flow, brand new, redone a lot of the grout, and, and kind of reworked the locker rooms. And I think while they're not brand new, we didn't totally restore them, they look a lot better. And so I did wanted to comment on that, and I've gotten uh, many comments from residents who swim and utilize those facilities uh, for that upgrade. Um, as uh, Mary said, we're, we're looking at our custodial services. We have a very primitive way of providing custodial services. Um, you know, you have a several thousand square foot ballroom. Putting a person in there with a mop and telling them to go from one end to the other is kind of an all-day activity. Um, and you know what? There's a piece of equipment you can get on and get that done in 20 minutes. And so we probably ought to get that piece of equipment and hop on top of it and get that done in 20 minutes. So we're, we have a number of things like that that we're moving forward with. And by the way, that same piece of equipment can drive around outside and clean all the sidewalks and patios out too. So a lot of stuff like that where we're, we're investing in technology, investing in equipment, and, and trying to save uh, a little bit of money. You're going to notice real shortly um, that the planters at Clubhouse One are going to be demolished and rebuilt. If you've been over there in the back patio and seen those planters, a lot of them are falling down. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that that would hurt quite a bit if it landed on your foot. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen it, but it's been an ongoing problem. They get repaired about every other year. And so we've just decided we're going to rip them out. There's no steel. There's very little concrete in there. Uh, they're just kind of freestanding bricks. And so we're going to go ahead and build it right. Uh, and then uh, once and for all, so if you're out in the patio there or in the area, you'll probably notice a little bit of disruption at, uh, at Clubhouse uh, 1. We've also been working on uh, gates 2 and 3 with some landscape and beautification improvements. Um, really, 3 has been done for a while, but we've been focusing on 2 over the last couple of weeks, so you may have noticed. Um, there was a 
a, a sign there, and I guess we used to have the tire uh, puncture devices there, you know, if you back up. And so they had the sign there, and so I, right when I got here, I noticed there wasn't any tire puncture devices, so I said, well, take the sign down. <laughs> and so they took the, the plastic piece out that actually had the sign, but they left the box there that the, that the thing went in. So I, I went back a couple weeks ago and said, can you please cut out the box too? Because I don't think we're reinstalling those. Um, and so that little things like that, there was a kind of an interesting tidbit, the original road sign uh, at gate two was was there but lost in all the landscaping behind the gate. And so I had uh, I had Ernesto's staff take that down and it's the kind of the street marker and had them take that to the history center. So they now have the, I guess the first street sign that was here that's been buried in the in the bushes for quite some time. So kind of an interesting tidbit. Um, we're really putting a huge emphasis on compliance. And so I, I don't want to have anybody come and see me, though I know you will, that we didn't know, you didn't tell us, gee whiz. So I have a crew right now who's going through carports, every carport, and they're going to do it a lot, looking for really safety and security issues such as having your golf cart charger uh, on the ground. Those are supposed to be elevated 12 inches off the ground. Leaving extension cords, and I know you need extension cords, but when you unhook the vehicle, you're supposed to kind of put it away so somebody doesn't trip on it, or we don't, you know, suck it up with our new vacuum truck that's going to be cleaning carports. Little things like that. We're also focusing heavily on a lot of pots and plants and things in the common area. Uh, you are not allowed to put pots and plants in the common area. You can put them on your patios and, and, and your more exclusive type of uh, use areas, uh, but that's limited as well. So I just want to point that out. And then, of course, Rory's looking for nuisance, particularly construction nuisance. You know, if you're remodeling your home, you just bide by the hours and make sure that that your contractor doesn't put the construction waste in our dumpster, depriving our residents of the space they need to throw their things away. So I just want to share that. Those are some of the areas we're looking around at right now. And I know uh, Chief Moy and, and Francis are out on the prowl. So if you see them, go the other way. Um, it is budget time right now. And so we're, we're looking at uh, priorities. We have a meeting Thursday. I want to say it's at 930. Is that correct? I think it is. Um, with GRF, it's kind of really a, almost a fireside chat, just a, here's all the things that have come up for capital projects for GRF, and, and so uh, let's hear what you think about those. And obviously, uh, uh, a lot of the, the mutual members will be there. And then we have a lot of other meetings scheduled to discuss that as well. But before I make my proposal, I did want to get a little bit of feedback from, from uh, uh, members of the community uh, the mutuals, GRF, uh, I mean, I think I have a pretty good handle on things, but I, I need to hear from, from all of you uh, before I jump out there too far. But just so you know a little bit uh, of what I'm thinking, uh, we need to place a lot of priority it's for GRF on clubhouses. You know, basically, um, they've been neglected for a long time, and they have dry rot and other issues, and we need to repair them. And so that'll be a big priority. Security gates uh, for United, that means one, two, three, four. Um, uh, but probably seven, eight, nine, ten for third as well. That will likely be recommended. It'll take a long time to do all those. Each one of them is a custom application because all the, the geometrics at the gates are all different. You know, two is going to be a lot different. One that's going to be different than three. Everyone different. Everyone custom. And we're looking at those details and design features right now. And so um, we may at some point have to ask you and GRF to look at at how we how we allow traffic into the community and make some adjustments based on these designs and, and capacity limitations of various gates. So we'll have those discussions uh, as well. But I know that's very exciting. I get a lot of comments from residents that they're really anxious uh, to get those gates in. Um, obviously, uh, in the mutuals, uh, it's kind of the same old story. It's you know dry rot, <laughs> sewer and water infrastructure, electric panels water heaters, you know, and then roofs, of course, and painting. I mean, those are, that's the big things that we do, and um, we're going to be recommending a lot more of that. I know when they 
talked about the number of projects. Mary mentioned the project list. Um, yeah, you don't have as many projects as the others, but yours are bigger, and they're actually moving. So that's a big advantage, <laughs> you know. Um, so we've got a lot of lot of big projects that are moving ahead, and uh, so I think you can rest assured that we'll continue that. Um, I wanted to hit a little bit on uh, customer service. We've uh, made a lot of changes, and I think Chris is doing a great job. We have a lot further to go. We have a very primitive system. So we're in really heavy design right now uh, on a, a new way of providing services, one that doesn't make you stand in line. How's that? Um, that that uh, allows you to be queued to a window so you can come in, sit down, tell us your name, read a magazine, watch TV, we'll call you when it's your turn. Um, and so to make it much more customer friendly. Um, also separating, and we haven't got the full design on this yet, but separating some of the services out. Most of the things we do take a minute or two. You know, if you want to completely gut your manner, we really can't handle that in a minute or two at the counter. Uh, we need to sit down with you, go over the plans, lay them out on a table. That's a different environment. And so we're going to be separating those services out, some manner alterations, and some of those really uh, longer interactions uh, can occur in a separate area where we can sit down and, and do a much better job uh, with that. So I think you can look forward to some pretty spectacular changes. The other thing we'll be doing is, and I've talked about this a lot, and actually it's already starting to occur, merging some of these call center operations. So really three or four of those have already been merged. Really the last big one is security dispatch. And I anticipate that that will be happening in the coming months as uh, security relocates up to the third floor and security dispatch relocates into the resident services area. So that's kind of the next wave on customer service. I anticipate it to get much, much better. And then lastly, I did want to hit on the tech front a little bit. And those of you who, who are on the media and communications uh, committee meeting probably know this stuff already. But we're very excited to announce a, uh, a new internet initiative. Actually, uh, uh, part of it's been done already, which is the upgrading of the uh, backbone technology that delivers bandwidth to your manners. But, what you'll see over the next month is, is really an opportunity to triple the bandwidth to every single manor in the community at no cost to residents. So we're very excited about that. I get many, many complaints about a bandwidth from our residents. About 10,000 residents use our internet service. Actually, I get many more complaints about bandwidth than I do about cable service, which is kind of, so you wouldn't think that, but that's the truth. So we're very excited uh, about that. And then hopefully merging a lot of this with the new website, Granicus, these other applications we're putting together, Dwelling Live, uh, into really a suite of technology options for our residents that allow for obviously transparency, self-service, and efficiency. So we're really pumped up about this stuff. We're moving in, a, I think, a really solid direction. And last, I'd say, if you haven't already, I sent an email to, uh, I think, 15,000 residents last week, please sign up for Dwelling Live and register your own guest. If you want to keep assessments down, sign your own guests in. 360,000 calls a year just to sign your guests in. Do you know how many people it takes to answer 360,000 phone calls? I don't either, but I know Chris does, and it's a lot. Um, so if you sign your own guests in on Dwelling Live, you don't have to wait in line, you don't have to wait on hold, and you get a text or email when your guests arrive. It's a much better system, and you'll be driving assessments down. So dwelling live is good for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. <clears throat> I might, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'll make a comment and then ask uh, the rest of the board. Uh, on the dwelling live, I'd like to let all of our residents know that <clears throat> instead of going in and filling out forms for annual passes, as we have in the past, with a self-adjusted stamped envelope, et cetera, uh, you can do that on dwelling live. And it's much easier, it's faster, and you don't, uh, we don't have to have nearly as much staff. Now, those requests for annual passes, paper forms were due May 31st. They're processing them now. But you can go on, on dwelling live and do that 
digitally, and that's what we'd like to move to. So they're not asking you for a self-addressed stamped envelope. If you turn that in, they will do it on Dwelling Live at that time. So just a little bit of a change, but again, uh, using our technology to make it better. Brad, do you have a Yeah, th that's such a great point. I, I should have mentioned that. Yeah, there are no more guest passes, self-addressed stamped envelopes, mailing to your house. Your guests will simply pick up their pass the first time they access community at the gate, and they'll be printed right there. So I think we saved somewhere between seventy-five and a hundred thousand dollars by not mailing that stuff out. You used to, we would bring in temporary help because it's a it's a huge effort, and we'd set up kind of a separate operation, and they would do this whole, you know, printing and stuffing envelopes and mailing and all that. That's done. That is done, we don't do that anymore. And we don't do that for a lot of things anymore. So I think there's many such opportunities and and the software repayment on that is actually pretty good when you have those kind of savings. Absolutely. Uh, Cash, you had a comment? Uh, yes, I want to compliment Brad for such a nice work uh, on this room especially. I had the CEO, uh, retired CEO of Honeywell India go through town and he was flabbergasted at the type this room is. He says, even our boardroom requires a few things you guys already have. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> Pat? Yes, I'd like to thank Brad for all the work he's doing, bringing us up to the current technology. It's great. Uh, one thing I am concerned about, however, something we haven't touched on yet, and that is that the corporate members approved about three years ago to um, approve or not approve projects of GRF that exceeded $500,000. And I want to make sure that we get that, that in somehow, because I'm not sure how we're going to do it. But we do need to call for corporate members' vote, I believe, for the um, upcoming meeting of June the 15th. We need to have because there's seven projects in here that exceed $500,000. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to reply, Brad, or? Well, there's, there's some discussion, and it's a, new, it's a new requirement, and we haven't really worked out a protocol for that. We need to do that, and I appreciate your, your call to action as to when that would occur. And, and uh, in my mind, because I, I think the way the, the language reads, it, it, it's more of when you get contracts of that amount. But it would be kind of silly to spend three or four hundred thousand on a design of a really expensive building and have the corporate members deny the contract to build it. And so I think we need a better a better process that you know eliminates the possibility of spending a lot of money on studies and designs and things for things that the corporate members don't want. And so I'm going to be suggesting some protocols for that. And obviously, uh, the GRF board uh, and the corporate members would have to approve that. But uh, I, think, I think we need to be smart with the way we handle this and not, not waste a lot of money. There's plenty of things to design and construction that needs to be done without designing things that you're never going to build. And I'd just like to point out <clears throat> that the meeting that we're having on Thursday, it's a GRF meeting on their capital projects. <clears throat> it's not approving any of them or any dollars at that time. We are looking at suggestions. We're looking at <clears throat> big picture things. Uh, it's not approving any dollars at that time. That comes more uh, a little bit later in the budget process. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda I is... request to speak independently. Oh, I'm sorry. I no? had Don on there, or Director Tibbetts, and it came off. All right, I have no speaker So requests. I don't know, Director Tibbetts, are you still wanting to speak as well? Well, I, I withdrew the, re the request after Brad explained what he was doing. Okay, that's what, that's why right. I just want to make sure the software is working. That's okay. great. Okay, Maxine. Thank you. Yes, uh, Brad, for all the... Right. I remember to move it over since I'm turning toward you. We were told to do that. And thank you. You know, it's nice sitting next to the general manager. If I miss something, he gets it for me. <laughs> I'm in the choice seat. Would you explain? I know a lot of people at home do not understand what it means to uh, triple 
bandwidth. Could you, because you said that's at no cost to residents. So I know it's a biggie, and I think they know it's a biggie. Could you explain what it means to triple bandwidth? Sure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, bandwidth relates to the capacity of a of a particular conduit to deliver information, and ours are, are fairly constrained by a number of things. Uh, probably first and foremost is, is the modem you have in your house. If you have a really old modem, um, you're not going to be able to push much bandwidth through it. The other is, is the technology deployed within the actual fiber itself, and so it, it relates to, to lasers and, and different kinds of equipment uh, that pushed the data. And so we had a basically 16 nodes and eight lasers, and, and we added eight more lasers, so every node has its own laser now, and that's what results in the tripling of the bandwidth. And so most of us, um, most of us probably need somewhere in the 20 to 30 megabyte range, and that actually I think that's the largest we provide right now is 30 megabytes. And so with this new configuration, we'll be able to deliver 100 megabytes oh, my word. Uh, to the manor at the same cost. Um, because really, uh, the laser installed, GRF uh, authorized their installation, and the provider of our contract internet provider has, uh, has agreed to update your in-home modems at no charge to residents. So get a free modem, get triple bandwidth. Um, so if you like to, this is particularly useful for folks who like internet TV. And I know I don't like internet TV, but a lot of people do. Uh, I just go on my cable provider and get my Showtime, my HBO, I'm good to go. Um, but a lot of people like to kind of get off the grid and not have a cable or have limited basic cable and then buy the things they want through their internet service, you know, like Hulu and Amazon, Netflix, those sorts of things. And so then they just pay for what they watch. You might have noticed, as I have, you got 300 channels and 275 of them you can't stand. Yeah. <laughs> and you're paying for them anyway. We all feel the same way. So there are a select group of high tech folk, and they're even not even that high tech, really. They're just disgruntled that have figured out ways to get uh, just the pay for just the programs they want to watch. And you need a lot of bandwidth to do that, and particularly if a lot of you are going to do it. And I think you will, because it's a much more efficient way to watch TV. Hey, <coughs> Chuck, can you add to that? Yeah, I just want to make one clarification. The modems that the West Coast Internet has agreed to, uh, to replace are the older modems, about 4,000 of them. They're not replacing all of the modems, just those ones that can't support the new speed. So about 4,000 of them, though. Okay, Janie, you're next, and I think your question was on that. So how do we know if, oops, I'm sorry. How do we know if our modem is that old? West Coast will be in touch. Oh, they will. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no more comments, <clears throat> uh, go to uh, agenda item number nine, which is the open forum. And you'll see things a little bit different. Number one, when you get up to speak, there is a timer on the lectern that counts down from your three minutes so that you can see how long you're speaking. Uh, I believe it's going to be on the screen as well in a corner so that you can, in the audience or at home, see how long these, these people are speaking. I do ask that you give your name and manner number clearly so that our corporate secretary can get it on the screen as well. Sometimes people just kind of rush through that and we're having to look up from the manor number or something like that. So your name and manor number, clearly please. And remember, members only are allowed to speak. Okay, if you have a comment to make, would you please come to the lectern? Good morning. Is my voice clear? Right. Let's yes. get your microphone on. Good morning. My name is Floria Pirnia Sanai. I am a resident of H66Q uh, as a queen. 
Okay, can you spell your last name for us, please? Pirnia, P-I-R-N-I-A. Okay. Hyphen, S as a Sam, A-N-A-I. Thank you, Gloria. A six Flo six Q. Floria. Floria. <laughs> like a flower, <laughs> if you may. Okay. Okay. I'm a resident of 866Q. On July of last year, my husband and I moved into this uh, wonderful neighborhood. We loved it until unfortunate things happened, which is almost now eight months going on. We complain about everything that we could to the compliance department. I am questioning the board if you have received any information from our complaint from sheriff and the uh, compliance department. Are you aware of what we are going through? Would you like to explain it to us? I mean, we get If you're stats. not, I can uh, very much <laughs> summarize it. Three summarize minutes it, not, please. But I try to. Uh, it all started when our uh, downstairs neighbors moved in, 866D, as a David. Uh, it took two months of bearing the fact that they were banging on the wall, hanging things. We buried, we said, okay, they're moving in. It was uh, a night after two months, it was around 10.30, 11.30, that I was hearing bang, 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 and hang, hang, hang. So I thought maybe they need you know, help. I went down there to ask them if they need any help. There are two women, they laughed at me and said, no, we're just hanging things on the wall. I said, at 10.30, 11.30 at night, I'm trying to sleep, please, very calmly. And I said bye, went up. Next morning, around 6.30, bang, bang, bang at my door. I got up off the bed saying, what's going on? She said, so you know I can do it too. I said, you can do what? I said, I can't bother you also if you bother me. I said, but I didn't come to bother you. I asked what is going on. This continued every night, middle of the night, morning, day, banging on the uh, ceiling with broom, walking around the ceiling with broom, just making it uncomfortable for us for the good thing that I did to ask them if they need any help. Didn't get anywhere. We called the uh, security. They came, they took a report. We took it as they advised to the compliance department. We have a complaint of this thick in the compliance department sitting. Didn't get anywhere. They came and keyed my, car, my husband's car all over, bumper, inside, out. I mean, you name it, the car is damaged. It's out there. You can't see it. We called the security. They said, we take a report. We give it to the board. Call sheriff. We called the sheriff. They said, we take a report. Give it to the board. <laughs> All those things. They didn't get anywhere. They, uh, they keyed my car. They keyed my sister-in-law's, both my sister-in-law's car that came in. We were not getting anywhere except calling security, writing report, calling sheriff, writing report. Our wonderful neighbors are concerned because they okay. damaged everything. Your time is up, and My I would time like is up. to tell you that yes, please tell <coughs> compliance me what is, is handling do. that, and it will be handled through our disciplinary hearings, uh, uh, meetings, etc. And it's not something that we handle at the board here. I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? Where am I supposed to go? Well, you don't have to go anywhere. You have done what you were supposed to do. Uh -huh. And all of those are being handled by compliance, put together with the reports and all that you have put in, and the security and the sheriff, et cetera. And they will be handled during our, for, uh, through our member disciplinary hearings. And when would we hear that, please? When are we I don't know to? that you will hear. We don't, comp we don't report back to you. Uh, basically, we, we deal with the person the complaint was made against. Perhaps Ms. Moss back here can wrenches. be of assistance. Okay, they, they, may I? I'll help you. Yeah, you if you would up. go ahead and talk to, to Lori, because your, your time is up for member comments. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Your name and banner number, Good morning, please. I'm Linda Van Campen. I'm uh, an owner at 865Q Rhonda Mendoza next to uh, building 866. I share a carport structure with Mike Flora and his family, number 633. 
Uh, excuse me, can you pause just a minute? The timing is wrong. Let's get it back to three minutes. <laughs> We're only here for two minutes. <clears throat> Wonderful new technology, but sometimes doesn't quite work. We want to give you your full three minutes. <clears throat> Do we need to time it manually? Okay, there we are back. Ready? <coughs> so I'm even giving you a few extra seconds. <laughs> Thank you. I am here to support Mike, uh, his wife, his family, and um, I am. I park in the same carport. That's uh, we're the subject. Um, compliance. The telephone line took our concerns, but we felt helpless. With the four or five acts of vandalism to his and other family member cars, he told me it ran up to $12,000 or more. Security in the sheriff department offered no solutions, but came back time after time after time to make their reports and then said, you'll have to go to the board. They could do nothing else. That's why we're here today. Um, my question to United Mutual is, are we on our own in the co-op to come up with a means to catch the suspects committing the repeated vandalism? Not only were their cars scratched and keyed, tires were punctured. I think five tires were punctured altogether. So of course, my neighbors and I were concerned that our cars being parked right next to the suspect vandals, by the way, they were renters in uh, 866D. Uh, so that is my question, is are we on our own with the, today's beautiful technology? Um, I saw an advertisement for Ring and how they can come up with technology for Cameras, security cameras, motion detectors, even a sign that could have been provided by security saying that this carport is under surveillance might have helped some. But um, we're here to inquire a better way of going about um, what to do. The suspects were evicted <coughs> again, and, but they, they somehow got back into the property and punctured all four tires. So once we thought the situation, at least where they had moved on, we don't even know if it's over. They could get back in. I, we don't believe that all their passes and stickers were taken. So I don't know what kind of background checks are done on these renters that come in here. Does the board approve the renters that come into United uh, Mutual? because um, they, they um, cause a lot of damage and a lot of grief and a lot of um, worry, a lot of sleepless nights. And um, so I just wanted to come and support them because um, we need to be together on this. And um, I lived here three years, my mother and father 14 years, and. <coughs> Your time no one up. has ever heard of a situation. We like thank this. you for bringing us to our attention, and we'll be answering after all of the. Thank you. Are gone. Okay. I appreciate it. Next, your name and manner number. Well, before I start, I just want to make a comment that with all this wonderful new technology, how about a take a number system so we don't have to. I'll talk to about that <laughs> when you're finished. <laughs> I'm Kathy Wolin, W O L I N. 15-year uh, resident, second generation at 953N for Nancy. I submitted a, um, an application for residence for a friend to stay with me. I got no answer back, 
Um, I didn't get a return phone call from Pamela Bashline, but the third time that I came into the office, I was able to see her, and she said that she thought that the board believed that Luke Bixler was to be a roommate, which is not permitted. He is not. He's a friend, and I don't know how to prove a negative. He does not pay rent. He pays for his own food. He stays with me several nights a week. Uh, occasionally, his wife comes down as well because they are looking for a place in the village. Uh, they will be moving in when they're old enough to. Uh, and I would like to continue to offer hospitality to him beyond the 60-day limit. All right, thank you very much. I'm sorry? Thank you for your comments. You. We'll respond to them after everybody gets a chance to talk. Good morning, I'm Chris Collins, um, 3306Q. Um, I'm here representing the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village. Today, I'd like to share a bit more about the Foundation's cooperative effort with Alzheimer's Orange County to provide respite services to qualifying village residents. If you need a break from caregiving, now you can have one with the drop-off respite care program at the new r, &R respite program at the brand new South County Adult Daycare Center, which is located at 24260 El Toro Road in Laguna Woods. You will be able to run errands, go to medical appointments, visit with friends, or just relax for a few hours, all with a peace of mind knowing that your loved one is being supervised and cared for in a safe and caring place. With assistance of funding from the Foundation of Laguna Woods, there's a limited time offer for Laguna Woods residents. They can try the r, &R respite program for free. An initial screening and paperwork are, requ are required prior to starting, and for more information or to enroll, please call the link Laguna Woods Village Social Services. We're very proud to be able to partner with Alzheimer's Orange County to offer this new service and to assist village residents facing financial difficulties. <clears throat> As one resident recently wrote in a thank you note, in these hard times, when anyone can be facing financial difficulty, it is comforting to know that the foundation of Laguna Woods Village is devoted to some level of relief for those in crisis. We in the foundation of Laguna Woods Village are so grateful for the generosity of many village clubs as well as individuals who make our work possible through generous contributions. As you all know, the Men's Golf Club raised over $43,000 in May. Um, this is an excellent demonstration of the positive effect of teamwork. That's the community, the Men's Golf Club, and VMS to benefit the foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Your name and manner number, please. Hi, my name is Suzanne Gorman, and my manner is 59E like Edward. Okay, your time is going. Okay, okay I, did, I didn't know when to begin. I'm here to let you know, the board, and also the residents of the community, that we are destroying beehives in Laguna Woods Village. We're destroying them at the rate of 25 to 35 a week. And I became aware of this two weeks ago. Our employees, uh, there's been an influx of bees. I'm not sure why, but the employees come and get the hive. They've been told to destroy the hive and to destroy the queen. It, this is an easy fix for us because all we have to do is have an outside beekeeper come and they will remove the hives and take them to a safe area. There will be no cost for it. Um, we all know, we've read articles that the bees are endangered throughout the United States. We need them for our agriculture and our crops. And this is, uh, to me, it's a moral issue. It's, it's an environmental issue. And so I asked the board to consider a change in our policy and let the outside beekeepers come in if you still want our employees to actually remove the hive from the building. All they have to do is hand the hive to an outside beekeeper for free. They would be happy, the outside beekeepers would be happy to get them because we have a shortage of bees for our for our agriculture in the United States. And so please consider this, and um, I'll be looking forward to hearing what you've decided to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay.
Next, your name and manor number. Sally Lacey, 61N. And I'm here to support Suzanne in her quest to get our policy changed on the B situation. Um, I've had this in a different community, had this happen where we had an influx of bees and we had a huge hive and we did call in the beekeepers and they did remove them safely rather than destroying them. So I just want to second what Suzanne had to say and ask that you please consider it. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Your name and manor number? Carolyn Sosinski, S-I-C-I-N-S-K-I, manor 353A. I have a letter and some pictures attached for the board. Can I just hand them to you? You can and give I them to the copies. secretary. I have a, black, a color picture and some black and white for the board and signatures. Um, we, lived, we, we all live directly across from Manor 354B. And a year and a half ago, a remodel project began. Construction conceded for a while and then stopped. And then in 2016, it continued and, and completely stopped. As the winter approached, our nightmare began. As the wind and rain blew, so did the plastic sheet wildly rattle. A sound of rain echoed on the plastic. It went on all day and all night, denying us the use of our patios if there was ever any wind. We have gone through previous complaints, two with the compliance department, directly to Brad Hudson, and directly to VMS. We also spoke with some committee members who were touring. I have the video if you would like me to I can give it to you to provide you with the video. Uh, a number of us have signed the letter here, and we would like to support our neighbors who share this ordeal every day, winter, summer, spring, and fall. We want this rectified, and we want a reasonable time to finish the project. If, to, if they not or restore the manor to its previous state, can put us, please, on your compliance list first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, your name and manor number? Judy Rizzo, R-I-Z-Z-O, 468-D is in Delta. 13-year uh, resident. Um, right now, we're living in a two-bedroom uh, Cordova with quite a bit of attached land on either side because we're fortunate to have an end unit. But the landscaping, um, I'm here to give kudos to landscaping, but also an observation. Uh, the kudos, I'll start with that, is that the lawns are looking remarkably well. They just mowed yesterday, and it really looks very professional. Um, but my question about this is, is there going to be a regular schedule for them to come do trimming. I think it's been many, many months, and we've got quite a lot of trimming that needs to be done. And um, if we had a schedule in mind, it used to be when I first moved in, it was every three months, and then it was every four months, and now I think it's edging up to maybe every six months. And things are going kind of wild. So my, my observation was when I was watching the crew trimming um, a couple of days ago, they've got so much trimming to do that I think they fall behind with no regular schedule. It's like a jungle out there in some of those places. So good, it, they're doing a good job with the lawn, but the trimming, we wonder if there's going to be a regular schedule. I'd bring this to the landscape committee, but I've got another engagement that day. So sorry, Maggie. So I wanted to bring it up here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Name and manner number? Morning. Morning. Karen Hoffman, 307A. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I guess to summarize what uh, I've been trying to accomplish and requesting of the board or board members only to find out that some of the delay was because there was a change of board members and president and such. So my concern and request is that when I uh, moved in, which was seven years ago, uh, I ended up having a roommate, which I had initially wanted and had a two bedroom place and I knew that financially I would be needing some uh, extra money. Uh, and then that roommate moved out uh, 
after being there for six years. And uh, I have applied for a new permit or re requested approval for another renter. And uh, two requests that I have made have been denied. And I have requested three times with emails and finally snail mail, as some people call it. Uh, I spent close to $19 to have return receipt uh, from uh, to the sender of receipt. And the letter that I mailed was requesting a reason. I've never been given a reason. I initially was, excuse me, uh, I guess allowed because for six years I did have the benefits that I need because I, I am retired, obviously, a lot of us are, and I know that renting goes on in the facility of Laguna Wood Village. And I don't know why some people can rent and I can't be availed the approval of having a renter. Uh, I understand a little bit more from this morning that uh, there's a lot of vandalism, but uh, at any rate, I'm requesting graciously and prayerfully that there could be reconsideration for approval of a renter at 307A. Thank you. Thank you. Your name and manner number? Good morning. My name is Nora Bernardo, B-E-R-N-A-R-D-O. I'm an owner of uh, 129C Avenue de Majorca. I'm standing here today uh, to represent my sister at 354B Avenue de Sevilla because I feel responsible for the problem that she's going through at this time. I have um, encouraged her heavily to uh, invest in the property. They are both disabled, and I felt that safety is of prime importance at this time as they were all aging. Um, anyway, the property required some alteration, and this is in reference to, to the speaker that went before and complaining about or raising some concern about 354B. Uh, we have had um, approval per, of the project and um, inspector approvals as well, but somehow on May uh, 2016, the project was stopped for noncompliance. The contractor and the project manager had been in contact with different people and my culture, we are very patient and tolerant. And this is part of the reason why this has gone on, because we understood how there were changes in the board and how different processes were going <coughs> on. However, I think it has gone on too long where it has become a safety issue for my sisters as well. Because the patio is left open for air and rain to come in, and they're physically buck taking the buckets to pour the rainwater in that goes into that patio. Um, we have sent letters to try and work it out with the alteration um, uh, personnel, and we have not found any way to get this uh, moved on. In fact, it has come to a point where my sisters are so stressed out because they have inconvenienced the neighbors as well, just as the um, uh, lady had uh, said before, before this. Um, we have gone through a, a problem already because in 2015 when we first applied for this, we had problems with the contractor where we lost money. The second time now, this has become a problem because it felt like the mutual is not working with us or at least um, in our favor. 
uh, please help us out. We need to get this expedited. Our project manager and our contractor are both here to try and support us and push along this project. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Name and manner number? Good morning, uh, Mike Sanai, S-A-N-A-I, 866-Q. My wife was here before and my lovely neighbors. Just want to have a question, who's going to be responsible for all those damages? We get it. I have a pictures in the, their uh, window, and it's not appropriate to show it to you. The complaints department, they know. I show it to them. I gave them the video. They were cussing us a lot. After we complained, next day, they damaged our car. One day, we went to my graduate, uh, daughter's graduation. On Friday, we left. We came back on Saturday. All four tires my car was punched. I spent about $500 to replace all those. And I called the security. They came. They took a picture. We were going to take care of it. Nothing happened. Before, another uh, tire punched, security came, sheriff came, they took a report. Nothing happened. That's why they came back and did all those damages. They killed my car, my sister's car, my wife's, everything. And nothing happened. I don't know who's going to take care of it. Who's going to pay the, all those damages? Damage it. She said about $12,000. It's more than that. Just my car, I went to get the estimate, $2,500 to paint just one car. Four cars damaged. And as my wife mentioned, during the night, early in the morning, we were not uh, sleeping. And actually, we were not safe over there. As I said, I took a picture and a video, and I showed it to the uh, complaints department. Unfortunately, nothing happened. And I don't know, what should we do? Who's going to pay all these damages? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Name and manner number, please. Sophia Loren. <laughs> <laughs> We needed a little laugh. <laughs> Pamela Grunke, 2214B, United. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of this board. And good morning, Brad, and thank you for timing me. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm here today to talk about all of the wonderful things that this community is privy to. And for that, I thank this transition team and especially Mr. Hudson, who's driving this bus. I have a concern about the Emeritus Program and the negative tune that has been offered to some of the outsiders. I will gladly share a letter with you that was written by one of the outsiders. Emeritus is a very important part of our community. And my goal and my hope is to see that nobody is left behind as collateral damage. Residents first, absolutely. But I feel that an unfair tarnish has been placed over the outsiders. And I hope that this letter will be a doorway to help improve the image that I feel has been unfa unfairly targeted to all of the outsiders. Dear Board of Directors and interested persons of Laguna Woods, over the seven years that I have taken classes through Saddleback Emeritus Program at Laguna Woods, I have amassed considerable anecdotal evidence that supports my heartfelt contention that there is no other program in California <clears throat> like this one and that classes 
and that substantially benefits residents, non-residents, and the Laguna Woods community at large. The damage that would result from collapsing any classes currently being offered at Laguna Woods is incalculable. Here are some of the things that would sadly be lost. The interpersonal partnerships that result between residents and non-residents. Instructors and supervisors lend respect to the Laguna Woods reputation of being a center of lifelong learning and enrichment. Students have reported to me that the classes have literally saved and extended their lives. One student, a 95-year-old resident, um, credited the camaraderie of other students and the knowledge he had accrued in lapidary classes with being the secret to his living so long. Another resident cited that he would seldom leave his home if these classes were not offered. Paid instructors along with volunteer supervisors spent countless hours <clears throat> maintaining equipment and disseminating one-on-one -on -one inspection, instruction and support. One volunteer who is especially dedicated to the classes orders supplies for lapidary and intarsia, jewelry and ceramics classes. As a side note, she reports that on days- Sorry, your time is up. <coughs> we do have a copy of your letter. Thank you, Pam. All right. <coughs> Thank you. And I will pass it out so that each one of you can receive this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a GRF issue. I know it is. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the but letter. You have, you have somebody that's on the committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Your name and matter number, please. Yes, good morning. My name is Marilyn Mann, M-A-N. And I'm the owner of 73-0 Calle Aragon. Um, my unit is currently uh, leased. And this is what the tenant tells me. And she's very responsible, as is her husband. This is the common area laundry rooms. Apparently, the washing machines have been changed in some manner or replaced. The fee has gone up. But the laundry does not come out any cleaner. In fact, it's worse. So my question is, what can you tell me about this? Also, uh, she reports to me that people from out of the area, and I'm not certain what she means by that, are using these facilities. So I don't know if there can be a security pass to get in or a key or something to curtail this problem because I don't feel that it's fair to the owners or to the, uh, the tenants to undergo this situation. So whatever light you can throw upon this, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more comments? All right, I'll go to the board. Right now, I just have one asking to speak. Oh, here's a couple more. All right, we'll start with Maxine. Uh, I hope the people stay. You know, so many times people speak and leave without hearing a response. All right, there it goes. So, uh, a number of people have spoken, and at other meetings too, about complaining getting the uh, security people out, the police repeatedly, going to the compliance department, but nothing's happening is what they say. What it is is what is happening is invisible. Unfortunately, sometimes, by law, we have to keep it all private. We cannot publicly say, yeah, we nailed that guy. He got a fine of $500, and he'll get another one if he doesn't improve. We can't do that. We can't say that. Remember that we are forced to keep it private. What it is is you watch for a change. You see if there's a change in what's going on. It's if, you, if things continue, you want to continue to re report it because as something, somebody's being dealt with maybe in closed session for uh, negative behavior around the neighbors, that will be added to the list of complaints that the board is looking at. My gosh, look at all the complaints here. Things happen. And if the, uh, the people that you're complaining against cooperate, it can go very pretty fast. But if they don't, if they're against uh, what we're deciding, if they think we're wrong, they protest, then it can take a long time because then we get more involved legally. 
Wish we could say, hey, we, we, we're hauling them in next week and they're going to get it or whatever. Or, uh, sorry, we found out by bringing in other people from the community that they have a different slant on us. Whatever happens, we'd like to, but we can't. We cannot update you on that. Just all I can say is please be patient. Watch for signs that things are changing. And if things continue badly, send in the additional reports to the compliance department. Thank you. Okay, Maggie. Uh, to that, whoops. To that end, uh, the renter is gone, so I heard. So he is no longer in the village. So uh, as far as insurance, I'm damage to your cars, I suggest you con contact your auto insurance and your homeowner's insurance and check that out. Um, uh, the corporation is probably not in a position to offer any remuneration to you um, as far as us proving what has happened. We can't do that, so we have to leave that up to the police and our security forces. Uh, for the bees, I will certainly check with our landscape department because we do follow all the UCI and statewide procedures for managing our pests. We are, are very careful about that. I'll check and see if they are vigilant and what they are doing and, and refer your suggestion to them. Uh, um, Ms. Rizzo, uh, who is wondering about the bush trim, well, the bush trim is done probably every two months right now, might be faster. They're moving faster through the cul-de-sacs. Um, so it depends on the season and what else has happened in the village and whatever else people call in. We only have a limited supply of workers, and if everybody calls in about something terrible at their place, then our workers get diverted. And so we want to be sure to follow our progress as fast as we can and do a thorough job when we get there. But it is not like an on-call gardener. Um, I hope it gets done soon. I'll put a note in the landscape department box and let them know about it. That's it, thank you. All right, Cash, you had a comment? <laughs> yeah, let me say that thank you, Susan and Sally, for bringing that beehive situation to our attention. I'm pretty sure we are very flexible and we look into it and make sure the right things are done. Uh, <laughs> Also, I'll say it takes a whole village for Mike and Gloria, especially, to be on the lookout and take care of each other. We are one big, happy family, and we want to be that way. Our position as board of directors is strictly to manage what we are doing for the whole community. But we don't have eyes like everybody. If they cooperate, things will be different and we're much better. So if you find someone doing something wrong or something not right, bring it up, make a complaint or point out like uh, Car you know, like um, Carolyn Fisinski did and Laura Bernardo came in to talk about her problems. And we sh I think our board should put that on the uh, agenda if it is not already in the near future. And we all are striving to be a better community. So please, everyone, act as part of the family and bring problems to surface so we can take care of it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right, Maxine, you've already spoken once, but I see you're asking to speak again. Can you keep it short? <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> we had two people talk about keeping, uh, keeping someone in the home. One is a renter, one beyond the 60-day guest limit. The residents at 563N and 307A. Um, our policy is you may not rent part of your manor for money. You may have a co-occupant. You come down here and fill out the forms. 
and you can have someone live with you as a co-occupant as long as you do not charge any money for that person to be in your home. That's part of our policy here as cooperatives. You may not rent out part of your home, and you can have a co-occupant as long as the co-occupant meets the uh, limit of age 55, I think it is. I'm not sure on a co-occupant. 45. 45. 45 for a co-occupant, <clears throat> thank you. Just come down to uh, the business office here and get the form. You can keep the person, can't make money on him. I'm sorry, this isn't a debate. We have to there. <clears throat> uh, I see Brad on my screen next, but I understand that Pat and Janie also pushed their buttons to speak. No. <laughs> Pat? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say thank you to the ladies in 59E and 61N regarding the beekeepers. I had never heard of that before, and I think it sounds like a great program, provided, of course, uh, they would have all the liability insurance and everything that's needed to come and do work here. So I would ask Brad and Lori if they will check this out, and hopefully this will be a program that we'll be able to adopt. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Brad. <clears throat> Thank you. And following up on, on Pat, it hasn't been much of an issue because we haven't had that many bees around, but this year has been uh, unbelievable. And probably because of all the rain and the extended drought, it's just changed conditions dramatically. And so we are looking very carefully at, at how we do that. Unfortunately, most of the bee problems we have, they're getting trees occasionally, but they love to get inside your manor. That's their favorite location. And so typically, we need somebody to come in and, and cut a large hole and then extract them. And then, of course, you get into asbestos issues and all that. But I, I, we're looking at doing a much more environmentally friendly process, just as the woman suggested. So um, we may not use volunteers, but we may use a contracted vendor that has, uh, has all the necessary equipment and contacts to uh, release the bees uh, back or you know, relocate them into the wild. So good suggestion. I did just follow up on these two compliance cases that were discussed at length, and I won't discuss them any further, but those are longstanding, well-known cases. Many of you are aware of them. I'm aware of them. Um, and we've had, I think, some fairly positive results, at least on one of them, but not after, uh, not until after a very extended process, which involves notice, appeal rights, all sorts of things that, that sometimes delay, in my mind, unreasonably, our ability to take action on someone who's really being disruptive in the neighborhood, but uh, such is the case. Um, so. Uh, we will follow the law and, and we will aggressively pursue violators. Um, we have gone from, I think in 2015, we did about 1,700 compliance cases. In 2016, we did almost 4,000 compliance cases. We'll be way over 5,000 this year. Don't we say, Francis? Oh yeah, we're shooting for the stars here. So we've been very, <laughs> very aggressive. It's been a point of emphasis of both boards. Um, and I've made a point to talk about it as frequently as I can. And then I did want to just talk about emeritus a bit. And we still have over 90 emeritus classes in the village. There are certain times and locations and class compositions that don't work well for our residents. Either they affect neighborhoods, they affect parking, or they're just not available to our residents. And in those very few circumstances, we've made changes for the benefit of the community. <clears throat> Gary? Uh, I guess I want to reply to the Mike Mark that these people had. Mike. The Can you please turn your mic, mic on, Director Morrison? Mike. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to reply uh, about the damages that happen in this manner to their property. And, and, and maybe it's at a point where we need to, when this kind of thing is happening, we do need to put security cameras up so that we can legally go against the perpetrators of the crimes rather than just letting it go. So uh, that's my two cents. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All right, I'd like to make two comments myself. We, our village is run on governing documents that tell us what we can and we cannot do. 
our governing documents do not allow roommates. Now, you can say they've been here for years, but they have not been here legally or officially. And we have 6,323 units. It is not possible for us to know when people are uh, here illegally as a roommate unless somebody puts in a compliance <coughs> complaint and tells us about what's going on. You'll see when we get to that part that we have a lot of illegal occupants. And basically, that's what the roommates are. Uh, I'm sorry that it's a financial drain, but that's what our community is about, and our documents say no roommates. Also, <clears throat> I'd like to just say one thing about the Emeritus Program. We have 90-some classes here, that's true, but the Emeritus Program has classes all over Southern Orange County that our residents can go to. They are not limited to going to the classes that are here in the village. And that's why we open it up to non-residents as well. Because if you're part of the Emeritus Program, you can go wherever the classes are uh, being given. And it's a much wider scope than just those that are in the village. OK. All right, our next item <clears throat> is the consent calendar. And before I get a motion to approve the consent calendar, I'd like to remind you that we took off <clears throat> the first item, 122nd 6D, and put it to 13B. And we moved um, item on 2010D from unfinished business to the consent calendar. And uh, with those corrections, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. The motion was recorded. We had, uh, you can tell me, I'm sorry, I clicked past it, so hold on. We have uh, G uh, Director Durrell moved and Director Leonard second. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we <coughs> approve the consent calendar. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Pat? Uh, yes, did you mention that um, number 11D was moved? Sorry, yes, we did remove I to the committee and 11B was moved over to uh, unfinished business. That's 11D, right? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. No further discussion. Would you please commence voting? Um, I wanted to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not on my list. <laughs> Did you push your button? I had several times. It, mine, I've got to learn to push it harder, I guess. All right, Maxine. Yes, I just wanted to know. I know that we moved uh, D out of the consent cal uh, calendar. Did we move uh, E, F, and G? No, we did not. Okay. Those are the ones that will be on our agenda in August. Okay. Well, one of them. Uh, they yeah. all say postponed to August. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments? Let's commence voting. Does the little circle mean my vote ca has been counted? All votes are, are counted for. I guess so. All right. <clears throat> uh, it passes 10 to nothing unanimously, so the consent calendar is passed. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next item on our agenda is uh, item 12, unfinished business. And we will, first of all, look at uh, a, which is our select audit committee representative, and I'm not sure if she was able to stay or not. She wasn't. She I'm had sorry. To yeah. That's the way it is with the agenda. <clears throat> we had a very good candidate that came in and interviewed with the board at our ex uh, agenda prep meeting. Her name is Elizabeth Accardi, A-C-C-A-R-D-I, and I would entertain a motion now to approve her appointment as our uh, audit to task force committee member. Okay. Director Leonard has moved. I'm waiting for a seconder. 
Gary Morrison has second. Recording. All right, we have a move. It has been moved and seconded. Uh, would you please commence voting? So mo voting is commenced. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we will cease voting and see what the vote came up with. Again, it's unanimous, 10 to nothing. I'm sorry, Gary? I just wanted to say that it's the mover and the second on the screen are showing incorrectly. So it's, I mean, just so that they're not relying on that. Yeah. Mine was showing not showing. Correctly? Like I seconded, and it was showing someone else. Well, then they pushed their button before you did. Or after. Well, neither one. No, it, okay. Oops. Whatever. I can change the seconder to you. It, uh, yeah, uh, if, if a number of people hit the button. It'll change second, every time. It changes. It doesn't take the first one. So well, we, that's just, something I'm, we have to I'm look at. I'm just saying that. You announced the first and second. However, it was different than what's on the screen. Someone okay. else had probably hit it after I announced it. Okay. I don't remember who the seconder was now. Maxine. It was Gary. It, it, was, it was Gary. It was Gary. Oh, Gary. Gary. You got so it again. Gary was okay. okay. I have Steve and Gary. Is that correct? Yes. That's yes. correct. Okay. Okay. We're doing this manually as well as electronically, so we hope okay. to, to keep this correct. Uh, and we welcome Elizabeth. We're really pleased to have someone of her caliber uh, on board as our select audit committee representative. 12B, <clears throat> I would entertain a motion to approve the United Mutual Committee appointments, and we did have some changes to that, uh, which came out as a separate agenda item, uh, and so there are still a couple of changes that need to be made to that. <coughs> uh, Maggie, would you read that, please? Thank you. Uh, the, on the United Laguna Woods Mutual Committee, that's 12B2 of three. For the Executive Hearings Committee, it is Member Hearings Committee. That name change was made last time. For the, it's on the, it's on, I'm sorry, it's on the new. The it's on the new version. Yep, that's why I redid it oh, and it's okay. handed out. Thank so you. hopefully okay, good. those changes are correct and if we have more then we'll make them. And okay, could you read the resolution please and the changes? <clears throat> that's what I want to check then. 12B, two of three and three of three. Okay. Uh, the changes were... Landscape. Landscape Committee. Uh, we're changing it back. It's Maggie Blackwell Chair and Maxine McIntosh is a member. Juanita Skillman is now deleted from that committee. Sorry, Juanita. That... Uh, that is the only change on that. Uh, from the reading of last of last month, we have for the Architecture Control and Standards Committee, just note that Janie Durrell is now chair. Steve Leonard has been re replaced, uh, has been re released. Parking task force. Oh, was, oh. <coughs> Where is that? Parking committee is is renamed the Parking Task Force. It's on the new list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not chair of the Resident Advisory Committee. Maxine is. That's on the new one. Okay. <coughs> All right. All you right. You want to read the resolution? Um, Resolved that those persons are hereby appointed to serve the corporation in their capacities and resolve further that resolution 11755 adopted May 9, 2017 is hereby superseded and canceled. Resolved further, resolved further 
that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution as amended. Do you move it? I have a request to speak. I've got, we've got to have a motion first. Do you move it, Maggie? You sure the will. motion was already recorded. Okay. And I don't know, there's another motion up, but it, it was already recorded previously. To approve, okay, yes. and you have a second on that? Yes. All right, can you tell me who moved and seconded? So Maxine, Director McIntosh uh, motioned and Director Akrakar seconded. Okay, all right, now it's up for discussion. Uh, Cash? Uh, I, I was wondering if I am on the Architecture Control and Standard Committee. I thought I was on and I, my name is not here. My name should be here. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> we will add uh, Cash's name to the Agricultural Control and Standards Committee. Architectural. Architectural, yes. All Sorry. Right. All right. Any other changes? Pat, speak. Okay. On the Landscape Committee now for United, Maggie Blackwell Chair, Maxine McIntosh, and Andre Torn. Thank you. I'm also on the committee just as a committee member. Oh, Juanita Skillman is on the committee also. Oh, Maxine. Yes, Maxine. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I apologize. Uh, I had understood that Maxine did not want to serve on landscape, <laughs> and I took her off the Landscape Committee, but we put her back on. Okay, so um, for Landscape Committee, we now have Maggie Blackwell, Chair Juanita Skillman, Maxine McIntosh, and Andre Korn with the advisors. Um, Cash has been added to the Architectural Control and Standards Committee. Janie Durrell has become chair. Are there any other changes at this time? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded that we approve the uh, committee appointments as correct. <coughs> no more discussion. Please commence voting. All right, let's cease voting. <coughs> Is everybody voting? <coughs> Director McIntosh, I do not have a vote for her. I got the circle of moving out. Did you get it then? Yes, that, I did get it. Okay. All right. Uh, we only have nine votes. Who didn't vote? Two, three, four. Okay, Sarah. They're all green. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't count Ma uh, Maxine when she finally voted. So what? it is. No, it didn't it's, count uh, yeah, Don, Don Tibbets. Yeah. Did you vote yay? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I can't do any more radicals. All right, some of this we're still doing. <laughs> Slowly but surely, we'll get it all uh, on the computer. All right, our <clears throat> next issue is agenda item 12C, and that is the GRF committee appointments. All right. All right. Uh, as printed on the Landscape Committee, there's a new change. Um, Maggie Blackwell is on there. Maxine McIntosh is on there. And Juanita wishes to be on there? No. No, I'm on GRF, but... You're on no. GRF, yes. but Maxine also wants to be on this committee. No, there are two. It's, two. it's Juanita and Blackwell then. Okay. I think that's the only change. Is that the motion to... Approve. Uh, oh. Director Akrakar and Director Blackwell. Okay. Uh, Pat, you wanted to speak? Yes, I did. Um, the finance uh, committee was supposed to be, uh, not committee, the finance representatives for the GRF was supposed to be myself and Gary. And in fact, GRF approved those two at their meeting on last Tuesday. So I'm, I'm wondering why that got changed. Uh, 
All right, before we'll vote, we'll change that. It was my understanding, <coughs> uh, Pat, that uh, uh, you and Gary were on the GRF Finance Committee, not the Business Planning Committee. That's a different committee. That's correct, yes. So uh, <laughs> business planning is still yourself and me. Correct. But finance is yourself and Gary. Correct. Okay, let's get it right. Okay, it's on the Finance Committee. <clears throat> All right, it's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> Is there any more discussion? Seeing none, please commence voting to approve the motion for the GRF committee appointments. We did it three times this time. <laughs> so I'm waiting for Director uh, Bassler and Director Tibbetts. <coughs> Okay, and now just Director Tibbetts. I voted once. I'll do it again. I did it. It's not going on. Excuse me. If you push the button, there's a little circle. Once that yeah. circle is there, you know you voted. You don't have to push really hard. It just, you yes, know, push I it, know. the circle appears. Okay, thank you. And the vote has ceased. Very good. <coughs> Uh, it passes unanimously. All right, we will go to item 12. No, we move 12D to the consent calendar, and we move uh, 12E to 14B. So we will go down to new business. Agenda item 13A to approve the 2017 election schedule. Do I have a motion to approve the election schedule for 2017? So moved. Oh, do I? I can't do it. So moved. I have to hit this. Yeah. And a second. I had a. I. I actually had Director Leonard and Director Akrakar move and second. Yes, All right. Hopeless. Very good. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry, F, you are correct. All right, let, let's finish the vote on this and then we will go back to that. I appreciate that. Uh, just to let the people at home know that uh, nominations will close for the four open board seats in the 27 election, August 11th, 2017. The ballot package will be mailed on August 28th due back on September 27th, and the counting of the ballots will be on uh, September 29th, all here in the boardroom. Our annual meeting will be October 10th, and it will be here in the boardroom, not in Clubhouse One, as it has been the last couple of years. Okay, do I have, I have a, <clears throat> I have a motion and a second. Would everybody vote, please, on the election schedule? Okay, I uh, cease balloting. I still have Director Bassler and, Tib and Director Tibbetts. I, mean, I don't know what's wrong. <clears throat> I'm voting every I time. Just circle. You had a circle. Okay, so now yeah. just Director Tibbetts. All right, everybody has voted. Recording. All right. <clears throat> All right, it passes unanimously. Hmm? <coughs> okay. All right, we will go back to item 12F, which was moved from 11D. Okay, would you read it, please? Oh, there's my little piece of paper. <laughs> Revised April 11, 2017 Resolution 0117XX, 
Whereas the Board of Directors of United Laguna Woods Mutual established policies and procedures for the construction of any alterations, additions, and expansions, and whereas the Board, through resolutions U0246, U02155, 010454, 010745, and 010873, collectively referred to as the land use policy, adopted and implemented the land use policy to allow members in limited circumstances to make exclusive use of certain portions of the common area to expand the footprint of their manor. And whereas members have expressed concern over the land use policy and in general the board's policy, to allow members to use common area for their exclusive use <coughs> by making alterations to manners that expand the structure beyond the original footprint. And whereas the board has consulted with staff, legal counsel, and heard from the members, including in a town hall meeting on February 28, 2017 in Clubhouse 3, and has decided to terminate the land use policy and not allow members to make exclusive use of common area through such alterations. And now, therefore, be it resolved April 11, 2017, that the land use policy be rescinded. And be it further resolved that the Board of Directors shall not approve any alterations expanding the original footprint of manners but that all such alterations currently in place which have already been approved under the land use policy are grandfathered and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this <coughs> resolution. Okay, <clears throat> the 30-day notification on this uh, has been satisfied. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve this I have, policy. I have Director Blackwell who moved and Director Leonard who seconded. Okay. So. Is there any more discussion? All right. Uh, commence voting. No, they, no. we have comments from the audience. Stand up. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Wait, I do have. We have directors as well who yes, like to speak yes, first. <laughs> took a minute to get up on my screen. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> Director uh, Cash. Uh, basically, I think uh, it's an excellent policy, but we have to allow for air conditioning compressor and moving of the water heater outside in the common area, as long as they are shielded or have some kind of. Uh, coverage of foliage or plants mm. so that they are not visible. I think those changes need to be included here. That's, that's, that's still a, okay. Sorry, that's actually on the next architectural control board for them to review and then we'll forward it to the full board. Right. Okay. okay. Pat? Uh, yes, I believe that this particular resolution is an extremely important one for the entire community. And I was shocked to see it in the consent calendar, which means it would normally just get skimmed over, yes, and that was it. Now, I still feel the same way that I have felt all along. For many years, people have fought in Laguna Woods Village because they believe it's a very nice community, which it is. And for many years, People have been making small changes, generally small changes, with the approval of their neighbors. They may have um, squared off their patio or various other things. And we all vote here. I believe it's fair to say we all vote here because we like the look of the community. And the community was modified by a little alteration here and a little alteration there. We're not cookie cutter condos by any means. And so I have opposed this motion from day one and I still oppose it. And I, I think this might be redundant, I'll have them tell me, but I would have asked normally for a roll call vote, which means I'd like to see who's voting in favor and who's not, but I guess this will do it, will it? Yes, it will. Thank you. Okay, your name and manner number please.
about the nine foot and same is for the water here. So basically it's about 18 foot total. So I recommend that we change this into the no common area will be used above, uh, above 18 foot uh, so that it, it can include uh, air conditioning and uh, water heater. And All right, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Uh, <coughs> as Lori mentioned, this is an item uh, that architectural I say that right. standards standards of it will be uh, <coughs> looking at. And if there is a change or uh, a recommendation from them, they will bring it to the board at the, this next meeting. This uh, resolution was brought forth in April and has been under 30 day been more than that, 30, 45 day uh, review. And so I don't think we make changes to it now. Mary? Mary Stone, 356C. I'm assuming you will change the date that says now, therefore be it resolved April 11th to today's date? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'd like to call for the vote, please. There were others that wanted to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. It takes a while there's, to pop up yeah, on Yeah, there's four more. All right. Uh, Gary, you're next. Yeah. Can you give me a definition of exactly what that... I'm confused as to what the footprint actually is. Is it the patio? It includes your patio. It's the actual... Okay, so then what If you what look at a drawing is, of the footprint of the, the unit, that's what it is. What we're saying Director then, Morrison, is Director Morrison, can you turn past, your mic on? I'm sorry. Is your mic on? Thank you. Yeah, it was. I guess my question is then, in the past, we've gone out past? Mm -hmm. Right. For instance, they would enclose a patio and then want to and extend then go a out patio. farther. Then they want a patio. OK, gotcha. Thank you. All right, uh, Janie. I just wanted to say that this has been going on since, what, 2008? The discussion, 2002. 2002, excuse me. Yeah. At the discussion of uh, common area, land use, whatever you want to call it. And uh, all along with the discussions since before I was on the board and being on the board, we have never discussed the hot water heater or the condenser. So I appreciate that going back to our committee. Uh, it was, to me, it was always included. There was never a question until it just came up the other day. And that's why it's going back to our committee. And um, it's always, Gary, when you look at a footprint to your drawing of, of your uh, manor, that's your footprint, including the patio. So we have people that go out and they build into the patio, but we are not allowing beyond the patio at all into common land. All right, uh, Maggie. <coughs> oh, I'll withdraw my request. All right, Thanks. Cash, you had another comment? Uh, I want to add something. It's not just the footprint. It's a three-dimensional space that you have as your manor. Any addition to that, for exception, we are requiring is the compressor of the air conditioner and the water heater, because there's no space to put these someplace else. Okay. Now, it, it goes to the roof line as well. If you have a flat roof and you want to change it to sloping roof, that is not allowed, because if you're going outside of your area, your allotted space. That is the definition of a manor. And when common area is, is common area. It means for everybody else to use. So I don't know why people are still objecting and requesting that this is not a bad thing and we have to change it. I don't understand that. It's simple logic. <coughs> common is common, period. Okay. Done. Thank you. Andre? Yes, I, I'm just a uh, uh, question about the uh, 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 water heater and uh, uh, air conditioner overhand. Is bay window considered as legal? Andre, it's coming to our committee. Yes. 
they will decide whether they should amend this resolution or okay. send it forward to the board. Yeah. It really is not something that we want to do today. If okay. we put those changes into this today, the whole resolution would have to go back for another 30-day review, which it would be almost 60-day because our it wouldn't go until August. So uh, if we pass this today, we can still make amendments to it if the <clears throat> architectural committee feels that that is uh, in the best interest. That's the answer I want. Thank you. All right. You're all so lucky that I got here just in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was coming here to respond. Name and manner, I, please. Uh, sorry, Roberta Burke, 933B. I was coming here to make a request, but I may not need that request. Let me just see. But for those of you who really don't know me, uh, I want you all to know that this has no effect whatsoever. What I, what I have to say has no effect whatsoever on my manner. Whatever I have, I have, and I am not looking for anything more. <laughs> However, I was coming here, and I'm not sure I understand that it's going back to committee, but not for another 30 days, to respectfully request that this go back to committee because as most of, some of you know, I have always been in favor with restrictions and with proper care that has always been given previously to checking and neighbors and so forth and so on. I've been in favor of small parcels of additional common ground use where it's appropriate and where it doesn't interfere with anyone. So I came here to respectfully request that you go back, take this back to committee because you had an open meeting, a town hall meeting, and at the end of that meeting, and we submitted questions, and at the end of that meeting, we were told that all of our questions will be answered by mail. Well, my question was never answered by mail. Yes, all the questions that were not asked were going to be answered. Now, whether you put it in a newsletter or whatever you decided to do, but my question was never answered. And I did make specific telephone calls to specific staff members to see if I could, in fact, get the information I was looking for. Because there was a big factor missing in making these decisions. And they're being based on either a policy decision because people think that it should be the way it was forever, or it's being made because maybe people can't get what they would like to have, and therefore, why should anybody? And this business of fairness, which really doesn't exist. I can't get, for example, a skylight because I live on a ground floor. At any rate, I never received the answer, and the question is, and I think it's important, I think it's important that you people vote for what is in the best welfare of this community. And it is today, Ma, as my kids say, and not yesterday. And people moving in need to have a little bit more space at times, depending upon one person, two people, and the configuration of their unit. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with giving that little piece of space between where the patio wall was in some units, and they now have built an enclosure, to give that little piece of dirt that no one can walk on before the bushes start to have that extra half a foot or foot for a dining room table to be f to fit on that patio that you can open it up and see 10 people, which you can't in a lot of our units. That's only one little example. Okay, I'm sorry, your time is up. You'll look at your little timer there. Oh, I'm not used to this. <coughs> I'm red. I'm sorry. At any your rate, I think up. you're no, making I'm a sorry, your time is up. Up the you better watch out. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> All right. Name and manner number four. Dick Rader, 270D. I want to thank the board for their due consideration on this policy. But I would remind people that what you are doing today is in the is in the, um, the name of fairness because we have people who live on single floor units not just on second floor units that cannot expand. So in the name of fairness, what you're doing today is saying nobody could expand. And that means that the common land, as Cash has pointed out, remains for everybody's use. And also, 
If you read Davis-Sterling Act, we're going to be in conformance with the Davis-Sterling Act because the primary thing that it says, if you read it, is that you have to have a vote of all the members of the community to approve any use of common land. That's the Davis-Sterling Act. So if you want to have variances, as Roberta just requested, you would have to have a vote of everybody in the community, and that is what it says. You can argue one way or another, but read it, and that's what it says. So I thank you for uh, doing this in the name of fairness, in the name of obeying the law. Thank you. No, I want to no. take his time. Can I have time? No, you may not. I got my question. <laughs> Thank you. All right, name and manner number, please. Barbara Copley, 410. The debate on this uh, land use policy before you, the debate is out of order. All that is before you is whether you're going to pass it or not. You've had years of debate. So I suggest that there be no further debate on this and that you do your voting. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have had a motion <clears throat> by Maggie, seconded by Steve. Uh, we have had discussion. Uh, therefore, I would ask that we commence voting on this motion. Has <coughs> everybody voted, Madam Secretary? Uh, I still have director. Nope, we're, we, everyone's voted. Thank All right, you. would you please show the vote? All right, we have eight in favor and two against. Jack and Pat English have voted against it. The, uh, <clears throat> the motion passes eight to two. Okay, we're <clears throat> back down to new business 13. And we have moved over from the consent calendar the issue on 126, 126D, and that would be under 11A if yeah, you're looking sure. in your packet. And Maxine, you ask that it be pulled so you get to speak first. Yes, thank you. You know, I believe this building, I drove over yesterday and spent some time walking around and driving back and forth on Mallorca. I believe it's called the Mallorca Casablanca. And if you look at this, you, these are the big, wide breezeway buildings. You know, they have one or two breezeways through them. They're two-story. And from Mallorca, when you look at this building, there's one on each side of the drive going into the cul-de-sac. And the downstairs units all have patios with a low wall around them. And the upstairs units have balconies directly above those patios. The architectural balance is still good on these buildings. And I understand that this, where they want that special glass to take it down almost to the ground. Now this will change the architectural balance of the building. The building in which this manor is located has the four patios. Two of them have glass above the wall. They've enclosed it. And two have them open. But they've kept the wall around. This keeps the wall. What? This does keep the wall. Oh, it didn't say that. Yeah. No. The no, it does what not. They're, no, it does not. But it's uh, uh, like a large window. It no, it does not. It goes it all the way to the ground. We understood in the, ground. In the uh, meeting that it would go to the ground because people were worried how close to the ground, how much mud would splatter and so forth. So this is why I'm against it. Taking it all the way to the ground, taking the wall out, now changes the architectural integrity of the building. And I know that we pledged for years to protect that help people along with their remodels, give them much, much leeway as we can, but protect the architectural presentation of the building, and this will destroy part of that. All right. So I, I hope you'll vote against it. Do I have a motion to approve? I still want, I have a comment. Hmm? I have a comment. All right, wait, let, let me get okay, my motion. We need to have a motion second. and a second before. Oh. I need a motion. Okay, so I have Director Durrell and Director Leonard. First and second. All right, uh, now we'll go to discussion. I, I let her, because she pulled it, oh. she got to explain why she pulled it. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, discussion on that, Cash? Uh, uh, I agree with what she's saying. Additionally, what I would like to bring about, bring to your attention that 
the water splashing and uh, stones from cutting the lawn can break that window or that bottom part of that window looks pretty bad. And through that point of view, I think we do, do not want to change the architecture at all. Okay. Maggie? I went out and looked at this building and I've seen the photos. I was shocked at the glass coming right to the dirt. But it does now match the rest of the building. The other balconies on the building have been enclosed with the identical dark glass, with the identical look, except they have the balcony railing in front. This one will not have any railing in front, and the glass will come right to the dirt, which I question. But, but visually, it is much more effective as to the building's integrity than it would if it had the wall outside the window. Thank you. All right, I don't seem to have any more discussion, so I'd like to call for the vote. Hmm? Jamie? I just wanted to comment, Maggie, that the committee felt the same. Okay. May we commence voting, please? Has everybody voted? Yes, everyone has voted. All right, cease voting. Uh, five to two with two abstentions. Oh. You abstained, Kat? No, you're no. I'm looking at blues, I'm sorry. No, yours didn't. I thought you had, were you a nay or an, nay or an abstain? No, I didn't. You're yay? Okay. So it is six two, two. to two to two, correct? Yes, that's correct. All right, then it passes. All right, <clears throat> we'll go to committee reports. Uh, report of the Finance Committee today will be given by Gary Morrison. Thank you. Uh, slide one, please. Okay, the total revenue for United through April 30th of 2017 was 13,123,000 compared to expenses of 11,053,000 resulting in greater revenue than expense by 2 million and 70,000. Slide two, please. We went. Okay. With a, it is. Maybe it needs to be a little closer. Yeah, it does. I can't really hear you over here. Pull your mic closer, please, Gary. Okay. All right, with a favorable Great. bottom line of 2,070,000 compared to a planned deficit of 13,000 through April, United Mutual was better than budget by 2,083,000, primarily due to timing of expense, reserve expenses. Okay. And the two uh, reserves are waistline replacements in which the work started in late May and water heater replacements, which is still being researched and therefore not started. Slide three, please. On this pie chart, we show non-assessment revenues received a date of 443,000 by category, starting with our largest revenue generating category, miscellaneous, which is primarily due to the collection of the annual golf cart electric fee, followed by interest income and fees. Slide four, please. On this pie chart, we see the expenses to date of just over 11 million, showing that our largest categories of expense are for compensation and property taxes, followed by utilities, materials, and supplies. Slide five, please. 
The reserve balances on April 30th, 2017 were 22.1 million. Year-to-date contributions and interest to reserves were 4,078,000. The year-to-date expenditures, 2,368,000. In May, we had special budget meetings for landscape and MNC committees where we reviewed in detail the service levels and reserve expenditures proposed for next year. The result of these deliberations will be presented with the entire proposed 2018 business plan, which is scheduled for review by the board on July the 14th at 9.30 a.m. At the July meeting, we will address operating costs, revenues, reserves, and contingency fund contributions. We encourage all interested members to attend and become with, more familiar with the programs and services comprising your monthly assessments. I would also like to add that the resales year to date are 53,355,859 compared with 48,686,700 in 2016. So we had an increase of 9,737,340, which is an increase of 9.6% through May of 2017. And I also want to state that the delinquencies have remained steady at about 98,000. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, our next report is <clears throat> J.D. Durrell on the report of the Architectural Control and Standards Committee. So our committee, the Architect Control and Standard Committee has the responsibility to recommend approval or denial of all requests for non-standard alterations and modifications or alterations that have been generated with neighbor objections. I'm going to try to keep this kind of brief. We're running kind of late. Uh, we recommend new architectural standards or any revisions of all multiple or all the mutual architectural standards. Final approval rests with our board. Um, our next meeting is going to be June the 27th. I cut it short because we are, really do have a long meeting. Anyway, come to our meetings. Everyone is invited. And um, just remember that United Laguna Woods Mutual enforces the architectural standards, and the city of Laguna Woods enforces local building codes. All right, we, we moved the issue for 607A down under your report, so that's now 12B, uh, 14B, so B1. You want to give us uh, uh, the endorsement for 607A so we can vote on it? 12B. Which, which one? 12B. 12B. 12E. It was 12B, yes. It's on page three of five, and I assume the secretary's going to read it. Mm -hmm. 12E, page three of five. Thank you. Thank you. Resolved, Jim. Resolved June 13, 2017, that the variance request of Mr. Michael J. Francis of 607A Avenida Sevilla room addition, bathroom split, window additions, install vaulted ceiling, atrium enclosure, and entry door revision is hereby approved. And resolve further all costs and maintenance of the alteration. Present and future are the responsibility of the mutual member at 607A and resolve further a required mutual consent for a manor alteration permit application must be submitted to manor alterations division office located in the Laguna Woods Community Center and resolve further a required city of Laguna Woods permit must be obtained and the appropriate city of Laguna Woods permit number must be submitted to the manor alterations division office located in the Laguna Woods Community Center. The city permit must be finalized within the prescribed time frame. 
and resolve further prior to the issuance of a mutual consent for manor alterations permit, a complete set of amended specific plans prepared by a licensed architect or, or structural engineer depicting the proposed alterations must be submitted to the manor alterations division office located in the Laguna Woods Village Community Center. The plans must depict any required structural modifications ensuring the structural integrity of the building is maintained upon completion of the proposed alterations and the following items. Plumbing plans must be submitted. A railing of not more than six inches from the window must be installed on the bedroom sliding glass door to prohibit access to the common open space area. The roof line must be the standard and may not exceed eight feet. Roof material can't be shingles. Plans must show no PEX, which is cross-linked polyethylene piping. The water heater must be a standard size and the enclosure should be the height of the appliance. Whirlpool tub must be changed to jetted tub. Resolve further prior to the issuance of a mutual consent for manor alterations permit, a required mutual roof alteration notification tie-in form must be submitted to the Laguna Woods Ma Village Manor Alterations Department prior to the issuance of a mutual consent, if applicable. All roof tie-ins must be performed by a C-39 licensed contractor. The member may hire a C-39 licensed contractor of their own choice to perform roof tie-ins for the installation of solar panels on all roof types except PVC cool roofs. For PVC cool roofs, regardless of the roof type, all tie-ins must be performed by the mutuals roofing contractor at the member's expense. All tie-ins may only be made to sound structural elements. Existing structural elements proposed to be tied to, which exhibit signs of dry rot or other structural defects, must first be replaced or repaired during the alteration <coughs> and resolved further prior to the issuance of a mutual consent for manor alterations permit, all landscape irrigation and drainage modifications associated with the alterations are to be completed by the landscape division at the expense of the mutual member at unit 607A. All gutter drainage shall be directed away from the structure's freestanding walls, foundations, and pedestrian walkways, and resolve further to, prior to the issuance of a mutual consent for a manor alteration, member must conduct an inspection of the sewer line certified by a plumber and submit the video of the inspection to the alterations division for review and approval and resolve further prior to the issuance of a mutual consent for manor alteration permit, a neighbor awareness form must be obtained from the affected neighbor at 607B. No construction may proceed prior to receiving this executed form and approval by the manor alterations department and the city of Laguna Woods. And resolve further all alterations must be installed in accordance to California State Building Code and United Mutual Standard Section 11, doors exterior, Section 14, exhaust fan and vent installations, Section 18, gutters and downspouts, Section 24, skylight installations, and Section 31, windows and window attachments. And resolve further, member execute the city's non-sleeping room certification form to a form to affirm the member occupants understanding that the rooms with egress eliminated by proposed alterations shall not be used as sleeping rooms and resolve further during construction both the mutual consent for manor alteration and the building, city building permit must be on display at all times in the front window. Resolve further under no circumstances is construction waste allowed to be dumped in the village trash bins. Construction waste must be disposed of off-site by the contractor. <laughs> Violation of this condition may result in disciplinary action. And resolve further, the mutual consent for a manor alteration permit expires within six months of the date of the mutual's board approval. 
and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on the behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I would move this resolution, but I can't do it now, so I don't have a spot. Somebody did it. All right, uh, Megan, let's go ahead and second to Ms. Jackson. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? We, we, we may have to do the motion on this manually because it was moved and then right. it's not popping up. Okay. So if we want a motion uh, and motion second first. Ja yes. I have Janie as a, as a first, and then I need a seconder. I have Maggie as the first and Jack as the second. Janie was way ahead. Janie was first, and I, and who is the second? Jack. Maxine. Yeah. I do understand that Mr. Francis do, does want to live in that unit, but do we have to resolve further that the member shall occupy the premises for at least twelve months? Now, always. And may not what sell or list manner for sale in yeah. 12 months. That's not our rules. They what? cannot sublease it. That's already our rules. Right. It's uh, our okay. rule yeah. that they cannot resell it. Is it? Okay. Yeah, pick up the first. Thank you. Do I have anybody else but Jamie? Mm. I just wondered, whoops. I wanted to make a comment that we have talked with uh, Mr. Francis. On a couple of occasions, we've been out to look at his unit. Um, I feel that he has given us the information that we have required. He's worked with us, and uh, I recommend that we go ahead and approve this project for Mr. Francis. Okay. Jack? <coughs> Excuse me, that, that was similar to what I was going to say. Mr. Francis is here. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. <coughs> All right, I'd like to call for the vote on the approval. I, I asked to speak. I'm sorry, you didn't come. There we go. All right. Sorry, it's delayed. Uh, Janelle, I'll, uh, uh, Janie, I'll bet you can answer this for me. Why? Oh. Janie, I'll bet you can help me. Why allow a sliding door from the bedroom that can't be used for access or egress instead of a window? I just don't understand. We had quite a discussion on this, and uh, Mr. Francis would like to have the opportunity to use the size of a sliding glass door, not to walk out and come back in, but to enjoy his backyard and, and his views that he has. And after quite a discussion with him and coming up with putting a railing yeah. as we do have in other units, we did approve that. Thank you. For him, it's what I believe it's six inches. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? All right. <clears throat> Please vote. I call for the vote. Commence voting. Make sure I use all the right terminology here. No voting screen on mine. We're ready. There we go. All right, Madam Secretary, is everybody locked in their votes? Uh, I still have Director Tibbetts and Director Morrison. And hold on, it's not coming Make up. Make your circle come up. So you press your circle, you got the circle. You've got to have a touch. Yeah, I know. Did you get Director Tibbetts? I did not. Yeah, it's locked. And where is it? It's locked. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there we go, I got it. Okay, so we'll just have Janie vote for him. It's a woman's touch. <laughs> Don, sometimes I do it three times. Yeah. Well, he does too, but he, <clears throat> All right, we, we will uh, cease voting, and the motion passes uh, 10 to nothing unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> 14C, a report uh, of the Maintenance and Construction Committee. Don? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> before I go on the actual meeting uh, information, I added to the agenda for next week, and I want to give you a heads up on this, that we are going to talk about possibly um, or considering a 
procedure of imposing a fine to residents who call in for service and then when the staff members go out to the manor, the resident's not there. And I, I realize that there are emergencies and so on, but 95% of the time, there, it's not an emergency because if the uh, resident will call back, said, oh, I missed it, I had to go to the store or something. And this is costing all of us money through uh, loss of, of uh, staff time. So this will be coming up, and I just wanted to let you know about it. And at that time, if the committee is for it, we will bring it back to the board. Uh, I would like to give you the latest on our solar power project. It's back to 100% now. It's running. It, it's uh, great, except for some minor problems that uh, Steve will mention. Uh, but uh, Edison has come out. They've rewired the system where there was a problem, and staff has completed checking the system and has turned it back on. Uh, I'd al also like to give you an update on a couple of projects that we have uh, started uh, two years ago and one this year. The, uh, remember the toilet replacement? We voted that in about three years ago. Uh, that's a five-year project. We are more than halfway through in these, plus new uh, residents are putting in their own. So this project will finish ahead of schedule and very cost-effective. Uh, on the Pushmatic uh, replacement of the old electrical panels, we did a few of those at the end of 2016 and then uh, continued, continued with it. It's a 10-year program, and of now we have a little over 100 of them replaced, by 167, I think. And so that's on task. Another item that we uh, are working on is the, the epoxy waistline program. Uh, we rewarded uh, a contract to uh, New Flow. They have done work here before. They're on schedule. Uh, this is a $1.5 million yearly uh, program, and it's just to install the seamless uh, line within the existing pipes. And, uh, <coughs> It keeps the roots from going into the pipes and it keeps the uh, pipes that have decayed from leaking. And another one last item I'd like to mention is the dry rod, which is one of our biggest problems. We met last week, uh, Steve was there, we met last week and met with uh, Ernesto and uh, <clears throat> we are looking at different we looked at different ways to finish the different projects without using wood, but I think we're gonna stick with wood. We have found that the wood, the fascia boards, for example, they, when they were installed 50 years ago, 35 years ago, they were not primed, a lot of them, and they didn't last them. Staff is now Priming these or putting them in correctly, and we will probably stick with, uh, with the lumber. And that's in uh, my report. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next report is from the Landscape Committee, Maggie. On May, 20th, on May 22nd, the Landscape Committee met with most United Board members in attendance and reviewed the present landscape service levels. Questions were addressed by staff during the presentation. After review, the committee made no change to the proposed service levels. Sample bill rates will be discussed at the next United Finance meeting. Landscape budget divisions are lawn maintenance, shrub bed maintenance, slope maintenance. Additional items are resident chargeable services, pest control, miscellaneous taxes, tax and, and support. Costs for the services we order for 2018 will be determined as our budget process continues. 
Village Landscape Work Centers serve GRF, United, and Third. Irrigation Work Center operates 163 irrigation clocks in United, controlled by a central computer, weather sensitized to automatically adjust watering schedules. Additional adjustments are made for water conservation, ground maintenance, and site usage by residents. The center handles all drainage issues. El Toro Water District will begin to connect United to recycled water sometime this fall and will set our water rate for 2018. <coughs> the ground maintenance, grounds maintenance work center schedules landscape work and delivers crews, equipment, and plants to and from sites in the morning throughout the day and transports equipment and supplies to the proper location for the next day. One cycle through United takes about 9.5 weeks. During the growing season, the cycle is shorter. Over two cycles, most plants affected seasonally will have been addressed. Departments of small equipment repair, the nursery composting, and pest management support the landscape work. The overall village landscape department budget has percentage breakdowns for the four corporations depending on acreage of land and the amount of services required. Lawn maintenance, United service percentage is based on 139 acres and is adjusted for frequencies of mowing schedules. Third has 166 acres, GRF has 12 and Mutual 15 has 1.2. Components which vary per corporation are mowing, irrigation and drainage, lawn repair, fertilizer application, pest control, and other tasks. Mowing frequency depends on the time of the year and the grass allowed by the mutual. Shrub bed maintenance is based on our acreage adjusted for our pruning schedules, herbicides, mulching, irrigation, and replacement. <coughs> slope maintenance is based on our non-turf sloped acreage. United has 24 acres, third has 117. The village has workers for mowing ground maintenance, crew irrigation, pest management, composting, equipment repair, administration, and management staff. As we move through the budget process, actual prior year costs will be presented along with the cost estimates for next year for our desired service levels. Residents are welcome to attend the upcoming budget meetings Friday, July 14th at 9.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. <clears throat> uh, report from the Laguna Woods Village traffic hearings. Don? Yeah, if I may, Madam President, I forgot to ask Steve if he had anything you wanted to add to the MSC. Um, in regard to the solar program, um, as Don mentioned, all eight array sites are back up and operational again. Um, we've been having some minor issues with the reporting system and um, we have a meeting coming up this Friday with staff, Johnson Controls and Progressive Power who did the installation of the system. Um, still outstanding for us will be the selection of a maintenance and verification company for the first year of the solar operation, which coincides with our performance guarantee with Johnson Control for the first year. The other issue that will be outstanding for us, which is important, will be um, in, inside training for uh, being able to understand what is transmitted from the sites and um, um, also going forward, um, some training for um, staff to be able to ha handle uh, minor events as they may occur. For example, um, if we have an alert from the system that there is an issue at one of the sites, we can go online and we can see that the site is still producing, but the communication between the inverters and the, the uh, transmission devices is not communicating with each other. 
rather than having to go out and have an outside company respond to that alert and come and visit and say, oh yes, we need to push this button on all seven of the inverters to mm -hmm. put it back on. That's something that I believe we should be able to have inside staff be able to deal with. Not complex issues, not big you know, projects or repairs or replacements, but just day to day, like the light bulb went out, somebody needs to go change a light bulb. So we have that meeting scheduled on Friday. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention um, on the dry rot issue when we had the meeting with Ernesto and the rest of the staff, um, one of the things that um, was of concern was the prior to paint program was running very tight now with the painting process. And staff had recommended that in order to um, extend that time out again to a comfort level that we adopt a program of removing decorative corbels from some of the building yeah. and yeah. rather than replacing them um, just to remove them and then stucco over. The other advantage that that will give us um, will be that when the corbels are removed, if there is any dry rot on the outside because they were decorative, that once they're removed to the, to the stucco line, uh, we'll have a exact on-site inspection of the true structural beams that run through the building so that if any, uh, any intrusion from the dry rot had occurred, we can deal with it immediately. Um, on, a, on an ongoing basis. Great, thank you, Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> now back to the traffic committee. Uh... Excuse me. Janie wanted to say I had, a, uh, I had a question. Oh, sure. I'm sorry, Don. Um, Steve, I was just wondering, what are we doing with our loss revenue when our solar project was <laughs> down? <laughs> um, we'll discuss that on Friday. Yes. But I have a feeling that we'll be something that will be going through um, legal. Um, yeah, that, that, that's between JCI and uh, yeah. SCE. SCE. And uh, we'll come up to some conclusion. So, so, someone is going to have to uh, provide an analysis yeah. of what was not produced. <laughs> I sent an email out to um, staff and also Progressive Power and JCI last night around midnight and said uh, and asked specifically who is going to do the analysis for submission to SCE. Yeah, okay. uh, they're both pushing fingers at each other. You know, it's your <laughs> fault, it's your fault. So anyway, back to traffic committee. I'm sorry we're out of order a little bit. Uh, we had about 15 uh, residents show up uh, at that last meeting. Most of the uh, uh, Fines were for uh, speeding and stop signs, as usual. It's interesting, though, we had one contractor who doesn't live here. He's been stopped twice now, last year and then just recently. Uh, <clears throat> he was glad to pay his fine because if he didn't, he would, wouldn't be able to get in here and work. And uh, mm -hmm. one other uh, interesting thing is we had a resident pay a fine for her daughter because uh, when an outsider visitor breaks our speed limit, for example, the responsibility to take care of that is with the resident. And that's the end of the traffic committee report. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. Uh, can we now have a report from the communications committee? Okay, uh, the breeze, uh, thank you very much for sending me your articles. Most, most directors that I ask are very good about sending them. And congratulations, most of them are virtually printable as sent, which is good news because 30 is not having that fortune. Okay, so we thank you for your good efforts. Uh, we have a bylaw ballot coming out soon and I just wanted to let people know there will be a heavy envelope in the mail, watch for it. Return the ballot marked yes. Although most folks don't want to read the bylaws or think about them, we need our bylaws to be a source of information and guidance for directors and residents alike. 
Because the law requires it, we will be sending United's improved bylaws to you, our shareholders, for approval. Our attorney has written a cover letter of information to explain our modifications and the reasons for them. He approves the new bylaws. We hope residents will too. We need hundreds and hundreds of shareholders to return the bylaw ballot with a yes marked on it. You can read the bylaws yourself. You can even read the old ones redlined on the village website to see what has been changed. Bylaws by nature are detailed written and full of legalese because they are a legal instrument designed to endure, avoid ambiguities, and resist challenges. Through many years, our old bylaws have been useful but no longer serve us the way we need. United urges a yes vote on the bylaws. Thank you. I now report from the Governing Documents Committee. Uh, Maggie is on that committee and has uh, given a lot. Sure. Keeps going off, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Maggie gave some of my reports, so I won't repeat that. Some of the things that are on uh, the bell on the agenda <clears throat> we're on the consent agenda that we put forth that we wanted to be able to have people notified about and that we will discuss they're on our agenda for future meeting uh, we looked at amending the qualifier for subleasing manners just to the effect that we now will ask that it be illegal for a member to advertise short-term leases in any kind of media anything less than the 90 days. And that includes things like Airbnb, Craigslist, all of the different venues that, that might be a, a possible. So that's on there. Also, uh, there was one paragraph in the financial restrictions that we felt was, was outdated and not needed uh, that was put in when we were having the home selling crisis at a time. And basically, that basically said that we could, didn't have to, the board had the right to suspend financial qualifications. And we're saying we need the financial qualifications and, and that that be taken out. Um, <clears throat> Our next meeting will be Monday, June 26th. And it's open to everybody. You're welcome to come and uh, give your opinions on any of the things that uh, uh, we're looking at with the documents. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Next we have report from the Preparedness for Disaster Committee. Andre. Thanks, Sachir. Uh, we met uh, the Preparedness uh, for Disaster Ad Hoc Committee met on May 25th. Uh, that was a very short duration before the previous one because we felt that uh, all the uh, emergency operation plan is uh, ready and we are set to go with uh, helping out, establishing uh, good neighbor captains. So Supervisor Caudry presented the United a good neighbor captain map and how he divided it. Uh, this, the whole area into 50 sections. We are now looking for uh, volunteers to join the good neighbor captains and establish uh, this wonderful program to help each other. And uh, uh, also VMS uh, Supervisor Caldry also provide a sign up list or uh, current good neighbors captains that signed up. So we are coming to contact with all these captains and make sure that we still have their willingness to serve and uh, uh, provide them information as how we can work together and get them connected up, building up a good neighbor captain network. Uh, also, we talk about uh, uh, good neighbor captain organization structure. Uh, we will have uh, the captains will may have co-captains and may work with uh, area captains reporting to the uh, clubhouses uh, coordinators during disasters. We talk about the, uh, the activities that they need to prepare before the disaster and during the disaster and after disaster. We will uh, publish those processes later. And uh, one major activity we have is so we are responsible for recruiting process 
uh, in the United and uh, Mutual area. Uh, currently, we are preparing for the uh, invitation emails to all the members, all the uh, residents in the United and Mutual area. And we will, once we have it approved, we will send it out and uh, uh, start our recruiting process. We hope all the residents will be able to join us and work together. During disasters, uh, we can only depend on ourselves in the immediate uh, uh, aftermath of the disaster. So it's critical for everybody to help each other out and make sure that uh, we are uh, supporting ourselves uh, uh, during the disaster. So we we'll please look forward to, uh, we we'll look forward to uh, all the support from the residents. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. <clears throat> I might also add that we hope to have for our next meeting, we hoped we'd have it today, but we don't, a map of United with showing where all the existing uh, neighborhood captains are. And we want to have that map that we can show you at each of our meetings so that you can see the spots where we still need people and don't have any people. Uh, so we hope to have that at the next meeting. The next report was the disciplinary I, I had cases. a request to speak. Oh, excuse me. Nope, you're not on. <laughs> it changed here. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, Maxine. Um, Andre, do you know, can a uh, co-occupant serve in, 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 in his or her area? Yes. Yes. I'll answer that. Thank you. Yeah, anybody who's a resident here are welcome to join this. Co-occupant is uh, a resident. Great. Uh, you know, we don't... Limited because during the disaster, it makes no difference. Thank you, Andre. That's a good question. Thank All you. All right, a, a question on the disciplinary report. Uh, we had increases this month again on animal nuisance, carport clutter. This is so important, folks. You think of things in your carport as just being yours, and it doesn't matter if it's cluttery at all. Carport clutter not only looks bad, but it invites crime. It's people going around and looking and seeing things out in carports uh, that are just ripe to be stolen. So uh, carport clutter is a very important safety issue as well as an aesthetic issue. Illegal occupancy is up again. We are making a lot of progress in identifying the manners who have people in there who do not belong, who are uh, roommates that have not been approved as occupants, uh, people that are staying over the 60-day limit for guests, that kind of thing. <clears throat> it continues to go up a little, but we are have compliances really working on that. Um, also, our short-term rentals have increased. They're up to 23 in May. And uh, again, that's something that we want to discourage and we're working with compliance and security to uh, identify and get rid of those short-term rentals. All right, we're being a little bit different uh, this time, and instead of just saying, does anybody have a uh, report from their GRF committee, I have asked that each person that, <clears throat> or two people that serve on a GRF committee give us a report, because I think you as our residents need to know that we are involved, not just on the committees for United, but there are two members from United on every GRF committee. And so what goes on in those committees is something that we're uh, interested in, responsible for, and give insight to. So uh, we'll start with the report of the Community Activities Committee. I'll give that report. Um, I get to it, announce all the fun things. We've listened to all the serious stuff, so now it's time to have fun. Um, the uh, Recreation Department will be holding a, a celebration for July the 4th at Clubhouse 2 with music, food, and fun. The uh, band starts at 6.15, and we'll have a, a bounce house, if you guys want to go bounce in the bounce house. <laughs> Um, there's arts and crafts and food to purchase. Come enjoy a family drive-in movie nights hosted at uh, pool number two on Thursdays, July the 27th, August the 24th, September the 21st. The CAC approved the extension of the summer hours for kids swim 
from 11 until 4 p.m. at Pool 2. The next CAC meeting will be on Thursday, June the 29th at the Community Center. It's scheduled for 2 p.m., but we're trying to get the boardroom, which may move us to a morning me meeting. And uh, anyway, I wanted to say happy 4th of July and come out and they're talking about fireworks and hot dogs or something. That's my report. All right, a report from the Landscape Committee. Okay, uh, the Landscape Committee met and the, uh, there's news about the Garden Center. There will be a computer card swipe on the, to enter the Garden Center. So all people who have plots and want to get in, be sure that your card is now workable. If it isn't, come down to the first floor again and they will re-magnetize it for you. Um, they will have a new woman who has good experience as a manager. Her name is Sherry Corbett. We now have an accurate plot plan. We know what plot is where and who owns it and what the size is, and that's thanks to Mindy Fielding. They will have internships of college students. Those are kids who help, apparently, our gardeners out. And that's a very good idea. They're going to work on that. They're going to have a full-time person who manages those interns. That's a great idea. There will be a new exit sign, which will say, turn off water, because apparently people put the water on and then forget to turn it off before they leave. So uh, it's the time for the annual creek maintenance. Uh, we need to manage the cattails. With the environmental restrictions, we have submitted three plans to the regulators. They have to decide on which plan by June 13th, or by default, one of our plans is OK. We get to choose. Annual pond turtle survey. If pond turtles are found, we must mitigate them. OK, they're working on turf reduction and samples of turf and uh, replacement plants, ground covers near gate 11 by the creek. They're trying out test plots. And that's my report for that. Thank you, Maggie. All right, the report from the Maintenance and Construction Committee. Okay, we have a lot of projects <coughs> going on in the GRF MC. And I guess the major <coughs> project right now is the planning to refurbish uh, the theater, the old Clubhouse 3 with a new name, and, and that will be done in phases. Right now we're in phase one, which is gathering information, and if you want to give your input, uh, write a note to Judy Trauman, she's <coughs> the chairperson, and leave it at the front desk and <coughs> she will get it. Uh, as I said, it will be done in phases, so the Clubhouse will, or the theater will never be Closed. It will still have. It'll still be used uh, as the project goes on, and uh, and that's basically it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Report from Media Communications Committee. This is very exciting. Item 13 on today's calendar. We approved the election schedule for four United Director seats in September. The deadline for candidate applications is August 11th at 5 p.m. in the office. This year, all mutuals are interested in granting equal publicity for all candidates so that candidates will not need to pay personally or solicit funding for advertisements or flyers. The boards want more interest and a bigger vote count in the elections and free, broader, and equal publicity exposure for all candidates. The GRF Communications Committee is asking every board to join in. The committee is planning to publicize and offer the following steps to educate the members and encourage people to run for director. There will be two 102, candidate 102 and 101 meetings open to all candidates with residents discussing aspects of being a director, the time involved, the skills and backgrounds, Robert's rules, 
basic village governance, the ability to listen and evaluate, work as a team member, and work for the long-term interests of the corporation. There will be three different Meet the Candidate forums for all candidates which will be replayed on Village TV. Each candidate gives a speech for two or three minutes, then answers questions. Two forms will be presented by clubs and the formal one held here by each mutual in this room. There will be a five minute video, this is new, made of each candidate, three minutes for a speech and two minutes to answer a common question. The videos of the candidates for the same board will be grouped into a single program which will be shown several times on TV6. There will be a publication in the Globe where each candidate submits a photo, a written background, short statement of purpose, and an answer to a common question. There will be a personal, of course, as usual, the personal candidate statement will be printed in the brochure which accompanies the ballot. In addition, any candidate may make appearances at club meetings if invited. A surprise idea is to encourage resident interest. 32nd spots will be placed in various TV programs urging the presidents to vote in the mutual <coughs> elections. Not for any specific candidate, they're just going to come on the screen and say vote, be important, vote, thank you. Okay, <coughs> report for Mobility and Vehicle Commission, com Committee. Yes, uh, I attended uh, my first uh, mobility <laughs> meeting, so it's very interesting, but I've been involved in bus uh, uh, riding uh, bus buddies uh, quite a while. So we have uh, uh, the bus schedule seems to be well received at this point. The initial conf uh, confusion has subsidized people already getting comfortable with the bus schedule and seems to like it. I've interviewed quite a few people that are sitting on the bench. They feel comfortable with the schedule at this point. And we also have a van service which will be provided, a, uh, will provide more mobility to those people who need this uh, special service. And where there are uh, now uh, wonderful excursions going to different places, like the markets, like the uh, special places that uh, provide this uh, uh, outside of village, those are very well received. So if you have any uh, opportunity, please sign up, because uh, the sign, uh, the space is very limited, uh, and uh, seems like everybody signed up very fast. Uh, we have a lot of bus information brochures on bus, so if you need any information, please make sure that you pick up those uh, bus information on the bus. Uh, we have uh, uh, Clubhouse One meeting, bus information meeting that uh, you can join. So if you have any question, please uh, come to the uh, 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 either me or go to the uh, bus, uh, bus drivers asking for this uh, Clubhouse One wait, uh, uh, bus information meeting. And we also review the bus budget, uh, the vehicle budget, which uh, is uh, somewhere around to $1.6 million. We are reviewing that and make, we will make sure that uh, it's the suppliers, the best need we can have. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> the report from Security and Community Access. Basically, uh, I really have nothing to report at this time other than the committee is very active and things are happening. Uh, I will have more report to you next time. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, going to agenda item 16, which is future agenda items. On uh, number one, I'd like to just make the comment that it's really not bylaw amendments, it's bylaw update. And we will be talking about that. The three things that were on our consent calendar will be put on the agenda for discussion at the next meeting. The uh, revisions to the drone policy, the revisions to the qualifiers, <coughs> and amendments to the financial requirements will all be on our August meeting. Uh, we now we have director comments, and I'll start from the left over here with Gary. Okay, I want to say that uh, it's been a good meeting, very informative. 
I have enjoyed the new boardroom, and I want to thank the staff because I know that you have all put in a lot of time and even extra time to, to make this work, and I, I thank you. Okay, Andre. Uh, I have no comment, but thanks for the staff to support and enable us to provide more information to the residents. Thank you very much. Steve? Um, kudos to staff for the uh, new board room. I know it took a lot of time, a lot of effort, and still working out some of the electronic kinks, but that's uh, really wonderful. And just uh, happy Father's Day to everyone. Yay. Okay. Jack? <clears throat> Yeah, excuse me if I was asleep or something, but what 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 do we do about 11H? Entertain a motion to approve the formation of the United Parking Committee. Task force. Just changed it to a task force. It's been removed. Changed it what? It was to a task, to a task force. force, so it doesn't need to <clears throat> go. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. We approved that at the last meeting. <clears throat> the parking committee. It was approved a task mm -hmm. force. Yeah, task force. Mm -hmm. And that was approved on the uh, consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pat. Thank you, staff, especially to Chuck Holland, who's been so patient with us, and Leslie and Catherine and Lori mm -hmm. and, and the <clears throat> young lady that left earlier. Thank you all. We, we really appreciate it. Don? Yeah, I, there were a couple of things at the very beginning of this meeting when the residents were speaking that really, really bothered me. The, the group that were, had their car keyed. Oh, awful. Yeah, yeah and then uh, the one gentleman over here had to get his car completely repainted, and uh, tires were punctured, and we kind of sloughed over that, I thought. I, they, they left without a, without a response that they wanted to hear, and I'm not sure what kind of response we, should, we could give them. No, we can't uh, pay for it. We had a committee at one time, in fact, you were in charge of it, one, you know, uh, that we would meet and we would listen to these residents. One we still on do. One. The resident advisory will meet this Thursday. Oh, good. <laughs> Hopefully some of these people will go there. These people want to be heard one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. so I think so. Lori, just to let you know, um, board members, that uh, Francis Rangel came down and talked to both of the residents oh, that spoke in opposition yeah. for an extended period of time outside. And uh, I'm going to send information to the chief so that he can watch the tape, which he does on a regular basis anyway of today's meeting. And um, if we have an update that we can send out that it isn't uh, breaching any kind of uh, sheriff's department investigation, we'll get that out to you. All right. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you for all your hard work, Chuck and everybody and all the staff. Uh, but it's still cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day, you guys. <clears throat> okay. Maggie. I think the residents will be happy to know that in the future it will be possible to warm up the pools a little bit. <laughs> okay, Cash? Uh, a couple, three things. First, let me thank the staff, staff for the hard work they're putting in, Chuck especially, all you guys. Uh, second, I want to appreciate the hard work Steve uh, uh, Leonard, Director Leonard and Director Tibbetts are doing uh, uh, on uh, getting things accomplished. Uh, Parka, for instance, the solar and things like that. Then I want to just briefly mention task force. Uh, Director Leonard did a good job, but there were a couple of things omitted from his study, I believe, because some of the car owners, I mean uh, residents, prefer to park on the streets. And that is about 350 cars that I counted, and then I stopped counting. So that leaves us quite a bit of opening, and. Four of us directors went through the cul-de-sacs looking for empty spots and uh, looking for number of cars, and we find a total of uh, 1,224 spots are available in the cars, in the carports that are not properly utilized. 
And 7,613 cars, that makes, I was almost correct on my car count, that are parked in the cul-de-sac on the black tarp. Also, what I want to bring here is we missed uh, reading the monthly resale report uh, that normally Pat used to read, and that should be included. Uh, in oh, I, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. You read the two pages? Yeah, I did it. You did. He didn't read it. Yeah, because I did have a correction there, and I... Well, he had the highlights. On but yeah. it's, it's a minor one. It doesn't change any percentages. We but didn't give... He didn't give the... What I've always missing, and that is the percentage of rentals. Yes. And it, it was 8% again, so it's flat. Yeah, it is flat. Yeah. Thank you. Maxie? Yes, uh, a little bit to add to cash since we're on the same committee. Uh, the four of us spent a lot of hours really early in the morning, somewhere between 2 and uh, Six. 6.45, 6.30 yeah, a.m., so that we felt, and in the middle of the week, and not near a vacation, we had the best chance of catching everybody at home. And, you know, we found out those carports, people say, oh, they're 50% empty, look at them, they're only half used. No, they're used a lot more than that, not 100%. In some areas, they use them 100%. But what is wonderful is after going through all 92 carports, Thank and you. boy, that one uh, cul-de-sacs, that one over in gate 5, 208 or 7, 209. 209, yeah. wow. And 13, you know, big ones. And a lot of time had to be spent there. But what we have all found out is there's no shortage of parking. We do not have a parking problem. If you count all the available space inside this, from the street, on the asphalt. And we found a, a few that are very crowded. But when we have a problem, it's when they're not working out themselves. They're very creative. We saw, uh, I saw a car park where three golf carts were parked in it. And so those three people got together and figured out a way to get all three of them into one carport. They're creative themselves and, and apparently working out uh, any shortage. But I'm so glad that we do not have a real carport parking problem. Can I make a quick comment? <clears throat> yes, Cash. Uh, third had a similar study done last year, and yeah. they came up with the same conclusions, taking this uh, number of car spots available on the streets. We didn't include that. No. But uh, we are, I would say, if anybody is complaining, come to us, come to me, as I'm the task force <laughs> chief, and go from there, and I will see what we can do to make your car Park properly. Okay, thank One, you. Juanita, can I add to this, yes. please? Certainly, you're on that task force. Also, what <laughs> I'd like to say is, uh, and I'm in agreement with them totally, and if a cul de sac is having a problem, I think what we ought to entertain uh, carports for golf carts, as are in some of them, but not all the cul de sacs, which could take care of some of the problems. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we are now up to agenda item 18, which is our recess. So I recess this meeting. Oops, I haven't got a thing to bang it on. There we go. And we will uh, uh, be upstairs in the Willow Room for the executive session. Okay. Busy you are, you got me minded. <laughs>